Well, well, well. Me Welcome. too, me, my end too. Welcome I was not late. To three peens in a pod. Bob, do you have the mark bot working properly? So we're, oh, can they hear us? Uh, everything's fine. Wade is joking. Did you hey, have a, Chad. Did you have a mark bot last week? We were hunting you last week. <laughs> oh, we did hunt. Right we hunted deer applier. Yeah. Oh, good. I think Great. you probably are the one that trampled us both to death. If I'm, I'm honest, I'm hoping we that we were both killed by a buck. I'm hoping yeah. that it's a mod in that game you were playing that has a model of me as the deer, and it replaces all deer with just stalking models of me, like long limbed, big horned versions of me. So, uh, and, and a full Mark soundboard <laughs> I'm from really the he so. who comes right after you. I mean, that doesn't exist anymore. That's over. Yeah, what are you talking about? Who knows? Uh, what's it? Lumpy comes right after you. What's that thing called that Lump you do now? Lunky. Lumpo? Lumpy. Glumpus? Wait, you gotta and mock I actually, everything. I, I only watch videos on your channel that I'm in, if I'm 100% <laughs> honest. So I have no idea what else happens in your world. That's fair. I, I get that. That's fair. I understand. Your yeah. edit of my uh, confession, by the way, made me look really crazy. I recorded a sane, <laughs> rational uh -huh, yeah. uh, video, and mm -hmm. then Mark had Lixian make me look like the crazy person. Uh, not just Lixian. You know, Rachel, Rachel, I think, really, really did ah, it. And then Lixian did the finishing touches on it and really amped up the crazy, you know. Well, I was right. <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. end, you were right, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Nailed it. Called it. Wade, you should have believed. I don't know why that person holding you at gunpoint was so concerning. What do you mean? There's no one here. That was, uh, in all in all honesty, that was really weird to film. That was yeah. one of the weirder filming things I've done because it was the day where we had a lot of crazy things going on in the news. Yeah, I know, And I was, right? like, glued to the news. And I was like, shit, I need to get this thing done for Mark. And then I was like, halfway, th like, I, I, start, I got ready to do it. I was like, is it okay to film this today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just everything I've been like eating question. up watching the TV, watching TV and like keeping up online. I was just like, let's just pretend to be a hostage for two minutes. That's fine. That's mm. normal. Normal people do this. <laughs> anyway, are uh, you sick of that bit yet, Mark? Uh, I mean, I I never expected the bit to take off in the way it did. So I'm just gonna move on, take a hard <laughs> left from it. And <laughs> Uh, that was so funny. I, I, I whatever, whatever. We don't have to talk about that. That's that's done now. Mm -hmm. But just the way that all played out was. Uh, people are weird. Yeah, you know me. People as soon weird, as I'm you know? done with a bit, it's dropped forever and never picked up again. So yeah. screw that and screw it. That's how I feel about it too. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Yeah. Um. Ha talking. Well, we oh, have shit. a we have a debate topic for yeah, today. Yeah, we had an interesting topic this we might, started talking about yeah. before we went live. This might be yeah. Three Peen's first debate. I don't know if debate is the right word. Like <laughs> debate, It may turn into it, a debate. In, in the loosest... <laughs> I no, I so. mean, I don't want to offend debates. Right, in the right. loosest sense of the word, this will be a debate. Mm -hmm. It'll be more of a, a discussion of opinions. Uh, yes, exactly. That sounds good. I like that. That's good. But uh, anyway, Mark, mm. why is YouTube boring? See, and there you go, posing that question in the way that, you know. Well, that, well, it's not a biased question. That's a totally neutral question. Why <laughs> does YouTube suck a big asshole? Explain yourself. Me as representative of YouTube, is that, is you that what it is? You speak for all of YouTube. Are you, are you talking for all of Twitch. Are you talking from a production <laughs> side or a consumption side? All right, yeah, maybe we should, maybe there's more premise required than that. Mm -hmm. What we want to discuss is... Each of us prefers a certain, well, each of us has our own preference for what kind of content we like to make and how mm -hmm. we like to do it. And we were just right before we went live, we were sort of just bullshitting about why we, we, we like different things in mm -hmm. terms of streaming versus recording content for YouTube versus, I don't know, some other stuff probably that you can do to make videos. Those are the only two I'm aware of. But like, we want to discuss what it's like to make content and what we like or don't like about different types of content creation. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how to, I don't know. Do you have like a thesis? Anyone have an opening statement for this? I have no uh, idea how to get this started. I, I, I think you're on the right track. It, the basic principle is that some people prefer streaming as a way of creating content or interacting with people or just like spending their time as a quote unquote content creator. Some people like streaming. They do that. 
I personally don't because, uh, well, for various reasons that we're going to get into, but I prefer making individual videos for YouTube. I do stream, obviously, right now it's evidence that I do stream. There are some aspects of streaming that I enjoy. I, I do enjoy. However, I prefer to make videos by myself or like just generally individual videos that I can put up on YouTube. Does that sound? That's a good, that's like a good, almost like an opening argument for like, or you stated what you preferred. Well, let's start with yeah. that. Okay. You stated what you preferred. Wait, mm -hmm. do you need a minute or do you want me to go, go install for you? Or are you ready? You want to state like, what do you like doing the most? Oh, what good. kind of I, content? I can talk. If, right, you, if you had to put a thesis statement, it's like, what's better for content creators? Yeah. Streaming for, or in your YouTube? Opinion. Yeah, streaming yeah. or so I'm gonna give individuals. I'm going to give a forked tongue answer because I think both. I think it depends on the person. I think it makes a lot of sense, Mark, that you prefer content creation because, one, you're really, really good at editing and you're very creative. But I also think your introvertedness adds to that because you don't have to worry about dealing with people directly when you're making a video. You can talk to your audience, but it's much more obscure me, I'm an attention whore. I always have been. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that making YouTube videos with friends, I really like multiplayer YouTube videos because I've got people to bounce off on, et cetera, et cetera. But for solo videos, mm -hmm. YouTube was always a fucking struggle for me doing any solo content. I remember playing games like horror games. I remember doing Kona, which is like a kind of spooky investigation game, whatever. But like, it was just always a bit of a drag for me because it was like, okay, I've got to chop down 50 trees, what am I going to say? I guess I can cut all this out. But I, there was just, in my mind, I was, I was always worried about what I was going to talk about. What was I going to say? What is there like, oh, let me find something. Like, look at this stick. This is a stick named Ricky Bobby, everyone. It's a stick, and it's my <laughs> stick. And uh, I'm going to... This is a stick. box named Tim. What a <laughs> stupid idea, Wade. I mean, yeah, uh, that's that kind of came <laughs> I think, for Mark. Whereas me, I always tried to force things because I didn't know what to talk about. So I would try to force yeah. something. But with Twitch... If I ever have a moment where I don't know what to talk about with Twitch, I can literally just look over and read chat. Uh, there's always like, you know, people are very generous. So, you know, there's always like, you know, notifications to read there too. But like, it's like worst case scenario, I've, I've got nothing to say. It's like, chat, ask me questions. And I'll, I'll see something that'll get me started on a whole nother topic. And I don't know. I just, I really enjoy that. I enjoy the live feedback with people. They can be like, wait, you're an idiot. And I'm like, you're right. And I don't know. I, I enjoy that aspect too. Um, I think it, it all boils down to how many times you tell your audience to shut up because me for you It's like you go to them for uh, Content for me. I'm like chat shut up get out of my way. I'm talking <laughs> <laughs> And that's kind of yeah. like my YouTube thing of like you don't know what the hell is even entertaining go away I'm in charge I mean well, you know, your audience used to be like um your audience used to be known as like the market flights or whatever. Well, they didn't, know, they didn't get known by anything. The minions, well, that, that was a fandom like way back when. Mm. But I call my chat little shits now. I don't really, they don't really have an official, they're just all little shitheads. So yeah. I call them little shits. That makes sense. But I don't know, having, it was like when we were on tour, I think I had this realization on tour. Like when we were doing the, the first practices in uh, Tulsa or whatever, and we had nobody besides that one guy who looked really displeased in the front row watching us practice, it was like, this is going to be the worst thing we've ever done. And then the first time we had a live audience, I fed off of the crowd's energy so much. Yeah. And I, I have that same thing with Twitch too. It's like knowing that there's people watching me live puts me in like this pressured scenario that I really feel like I thrive in. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I, whenever there's not eyes on me, I just want to like itch my ass crack and pick my nose or something. And I'm like, oh God, I can't believe I got to talk to nobody and pretend to be here and want to be here. But with Twitch, I actually feel compelled to be like, oh, I have energy. And then as soon as I click and stream, my energy and adrenaline crash, and I just want to go lay on the couch like a potato the rest of the day. Hmm. So I think that's interesting, Mark, that you, you... I've never seen it that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. How you always tell chat to shut up and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's also a core part of my interaction. <laughs> but I would say <laughs> that my preferred type of content creation is streaming. My favorite way to do you know basically what we do is is live on a stream uh, and i will say there's a different part of it where if i had to pick a type of video to make i would always make multiplayer videos mm -hmm. because i feel like single player videos i don't i don't have the type of personality where i'll just generate a bunch of bullshit that, that i can riff on and make entertaining 
I will just sit and silently play a game, especially if I'm enjoying it. Mm. I'll just sit and I'll just yeah. do the game and like, but if I'm with people, my motivation is heavily trying to get whoever I'm gaming with to laugh mm -hmm. and not in like a sell out -y way of like, I'll do anything for a laugh, but I'm always <laughs> like, like, what would be shocking right now? What yeah. would be like, well, how could I react to this? That would be nonsense that would defy people's expectations of me because mm. I'm generally in real life. Like I'm a reserved person. I would say I am funny, but I'm mm. not like, I'm not like that person who's always just funny. No matter what I can be funny or I can be dead silent. And that, that creates a really confusing expectation for people because some people who know me, especially if they know me in certain contexts would think I'm a super serious, like anyone I went to law school with mm -hmm. probably thinks I'm a super dull, super serious, like focused sort of person, but it's the, you know, so I would rather make a multiplayer YouTube video mm -hmm. than stream by myself a lot of the time, yeah. but I would almost always rather stream than record a YouTube video because I can fuck with chat. I can tell yeah. them to shut up. I can call them liars oh, yeah. and idiots. Oh, yeah. The dynamic yes. of hating chat and telling them that they're idiots just to, just to get a reaction, yeah. especially in situations where they're not doing anything yeah. is like, there's something about that that I find really entertaining more so than YouTube. And I do think I get why you like YouTube and my answer is different than Wade's because you have a more specific vision. I feel like when you start, even when you're just making like, you know, like three scary game videos or something, something that an, an observer, an outside observer might see as like, oh, just another, you know, Mark's cranking out content, whatever. Mm -hmm. You go into that usually with some idea of like, okay, I'm going to do this persona, or I'm curious about this specific part of this game or this character. And you have like, you either have or you develop an idea of what what is the thing in this video? What's the idea? Build it out, riff on it. And or in editing, you know, find it and edit it have your editor make it so that that's the focus of the video. Yeah. I really don't approach it in that way. Mm -hmm. I'm here to like react and you know, it's, it's more like improv. My yeah. entire life is more like improv, and, yeah. but you, you have a much more specific creative direction. Yeah. I think but, that, uh, you know, ahead. well, that's pretty much it. I mean, what, how do you react to that? I guess. No, I mean that, that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's about when you make a YouTube video versus streaming, you are trying to craft a product, a product that is, technically going to live quote unquote forever um so for me when i make things like that e even gameplay videos it is just very much like okay what what is what is this what is this unique entity here this one thing whereas streaming it's very open unless there are people that do like high production streams and live shows and stuff like that and i think those those fall under a different category uh because like in terms of performative it's about the same in terms of playing games streaming or playing games on YouTube. Um, it's harder to do like, uh, it's nearly impossible to do like sketches and stuff live, unless you're doing some mm -hmm. kind of a play uh, type thing. Um, but for, for me, I feel like streaming is, it chains you to a desk for five, six days a week, hours on end. And it's it becomes very much like a, a uh, regular job. And I'm not saying that what I do with YouTube isn't a regular job, but it does feel like I have more freedom as a primarily a YouTuber than a streamer would. And I look, I look at streamers that are on for 12 hours a day, and I get that for most of the people that stream, they would be there 12 hours a day playing game anyway. Uh, but it's, it's like I, I often feel like they would have more time to do things if they didn't stream so much, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, they do have YouTube channels where they put their streams and cut downs on, on YouTube. Uh, and that's a successful way to go about it. And it can definitely like be beneficial to do, but that's why I, I don't just do game stuff on YouTube. I, I do creative endeavors. I feel like I can be more creative just doing YouTube videos. Um, so, uh, for me, I will say that I think making videos on YouTube is better than streaming. I'm going to say it. I think that's a funny perspective on it because mm -hmm. I, I feel exactly the same way that streaming you are you are tied to the schedule and you set the schedule and i think a lot of streamers go really overboard and mm -hmm. like the grind the grind is part of it to get from zero followers to it being your career mm -hmm. the grind is necessary and like i have i have lived that life where i streamed 
more than I do now. I stream a good deal these days, but like that is hard. But that's actually something that I think I like about it. Mm -hmm. As a person who gets distracted by everything in existence, that having a set schedule where I have to do something and it's not like I have to get this done, you know, nebulously, there's a deadline, it has to be, maybe it has to be posted a certain day or something. Mm -hmm. It's, it's inescapable. I have to stream on my scheduled stream times and I still show up late because I get distracted and thrown off track. But I like that structure, a little bit of structure, and especially structure that I get to control makes it m less mentally taxing on me and makes it feel less crazy. When my life was only trying to record and it was like, you can do whatever you want. I could be as creative as I want. I could sit down and play a game. I could, I could try and come up with a more complicated idea to execute, to record. That's too, that's like too much freedom for me on a daily basis. That leads me to decide nothing. That leads me to be less productive. Then I get what you're saying about losing the time of constantly having, you know, streaming five hours a day, seven hours a day, whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you can't do anything else, but I need that. I, I, I'm like a child. I crave that, that structure. And like, I'm, you could still just cancel a stream. I know streamers treat their schedule and the grind like it's some sacred thing. It's not a fucking badge of honor that you streamed 100 hours this week. It's great for you because it means you probably made good money and it means you got good growth, mm -hmm. but you're allowed to take time off. If you have something in your real life that you have to take care of, come up uh, with family or, you know, like I'm buying a house right now, Mandy and I are buying a house. I've canceled several streams because I had to be on the phone with people and getting paperwork together and finding financial documents and all this boring shit. It's not a badge of honor that you put your stream over anything else in your life in term of importance, but you do like you have to prioritize it. So there's a I, I totally agree with what you're saying, but I see that also as a benefit for mm -hmm. my personality and how I like to work. I, uh, I do think streaming definitely takes a lot more time. Uh, YouTube, it's like you could spend a day. But this is also I'm speaking about from a gaming perspective. Because obviously, like, Mark, I think another one of the big draws to YouTube is you've done so much really cool shit. Mm -hmm. We've got to be a part of some really cool shit that you've gotten to build, like, yeah. a heist. Even the video where we just got, like, smash fucking bottles and bake bricks and shit over each other. Like, that was really fun. Mm -hmm. But just all of that stuff and the toys we've gotten to play with over there, like, that's really, really cool. Uh, I've never been great at editing. Obviously, Dana edits all my YouTube videos still. But I've always felt a disconnect from my product on YouTube and myself because I never felt like I was a good editor and I never put the time in to become one. Mm -hmm. um, but with Dana editing, it's like I would just record a video and I would never see anything again other than the comments posted because I wouldn't watch my own shit and stuff. Mm -hmm. Where with streaming, I guess th there's like that live feedback aspect. And I don't know, I've gotten more comfortable being myself through streaming. Mm -hmm. Though, it, like you said, it is a much more big time investment because yeah you stream you know six hours one day and it's not like you can take the it's like oh i'm done for the week i've got all my stuff done because it's like streaming you have to stream you know somewhat consistently you don't have to stream 10 hours a day but you do the stream somewhat consistently because you know you're really making your revenue while you're live and so on and so forth mm -hmm. uh whereas youtube like i said i could grind out an eight hour work day on youtube and it's like okay well i've got videos for the week done or i've got videos for two weeks done and that's what we would do for the tour is uh, I'd grind, I'm sure we all grinded a bunch of content and then either tried to get it edited or edited while we were traveling and stuff. And you guys were working on um, one of the tours. I know you guys were working on Who Killed Killed Markiplier. Markiplier. Yeah. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. And you were editing that on the go. But like with streaming, it's like if I, if we didn't stream from like one of the venues or whatever else, it's like then you're just not making any content. So the con to streaming is you constantly have to be doing it. It's much more of a time investment, I think. And there's that pressure of being live, not being able to edit anything out. And then you also can't, you can add some, I mean, they, they, streams come a long way now where people do a lot of like cool scenes and fun transitions and stuff, but there's still something about a YouTube video. I like watching content live, but I don't like watching stream VODs. And people are always like, wait, I'm gonna watch the VOD. I'm like, I don't know why you would. I hate watching stream VODs myself because a YouTube video, like talking to chat live is one thing, but when you're watching a video after the fact, it's like someone like goes on a tangent talking to their chat. It's like, play the fucking game, fucker. <laughs> and I'm that person watching. I will never say it, but then my brain, like, come on. I just want to see what happens. I'm watching RimWorld. Play RimWorld. <laughs> play it. Uh, and watching YouTube, it's like, okay, some of the boring shit's cut out. I can actually see the action. I can mm -hmm. kind of doze off watching somebody mindlessly grind in this game or that game. 
Um, so I enjoy both content in different times, different ways, but just my personality, I think meshes better with streaming than it ever did with YouTube. And I still love YouTube, but I don't know. I, I really feel like I hit my stride with live content more so than I ever did with uh, YouTube videos. And I never did the creative stuff like you do. And I think that would, that would affect me if I had the creativity and the drive and the talent to do those kind of videos like you do, I would totally, I think, enjoy YouTube a lot more than I do. Um, or I shouldn't say YouTube in general, but just video creation versus live streaming. Um, what we're saying is you're stupid for your opinion, Mark. How do you feel? Yeah, about there's that? a reason you've been fake for two weeks. That's mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. in that what whole his, spiel. <laughs> his point is you're an idiot. I think yeah, what he Bob said was directly here. I am so diversely skilled that YouTube is the only obvious outset for my genius. I think that's was, what Wade his, says. His point was you're such an unfocused blabbermouth yeah. that your content needs to be edited, or it's just gonna be nine mm -hmm. hours of you sucking your your own dick about how much you love bone broth and how you're only sleeping eight hours a day or whatever. I mean, when I stream for eight hours and talk about bone broth, my audience retention is high. Uh -huh. I'm gonna I think what he said was all these streaming slack jaw idiot Wade's words, slack jawed idiots who can't figure out how Premiere works have to do streaming. Wade's words. I don't even think it Have does to work. do it's streaming fake. because they can't even figure it out in the first place. Wade's words, not mine. I am pretty stupid, and I might have said those things. But I, I want to, <laughs> I want to go back to a point you made about bone broth again. Yeah, yeah. What's up? We started this call, chat. Uh, breaking news. I'm an idiot. The most dangerous thing on the planet. I'm holding in my hand right now. It's an airhead candy. Oh. I broke a fucking tooth Sunday night eating an airhead. My front tooth. I will. Right there. Grandpa Wade over here I can't broke. even eat soft, chewy <laughs> candy. Well, it's kind of cold in my office. I think the airheads are a little bit uh -huh, tougher yeah. down here. Than, you know, Everybody's had the crunchy <laughs> airheads. We all know they're not gummies. They're he, not just uh, soft, malleable sugar. They're he, they're hard. They're tough. They're hard. He they're like, overturned uh -huh. his boxes of Vicious tech he's never bang. opened, found a crusty airhead at the bottom of it. was like, ooh, uh, candy. Listen, the Halloween 2014 they're airhead. They're very dangerous. They're, they should be kept away. They should be locked in a safe and kept away from children at all costs. I broke a tooth. I had the strongest teeth on the planet, and my my steel titanium fang bit into that airhead, and the airhead sawed my tooth right in fucking half. So this morning I got up and I got to go repair my tooth, which was actually it's, it looks better than it did before. So they did a really good job. Uh, but I got into a call with Mark right before we went live, and I was like, "Yeah, I had to get my tooth repaired." And he's like, oh, you know what you need is more bone broth in your diet. Get that collagen. And we started having this <laughs> just immediately. Immediately. It was like Mark being gone for two weeks. Like, oh, how you doing, man? Get that bone <laughs> broth. It's like, oh. All right, I see we're picking I right up. I see why you have to edit your videos oh, now. I'm sorry that <laughs> me, being the person that I am with the interests, still want to talk about the same things uh -huh, that interest uh -huh. me. It hasn't changed, but okay, <laughs> whatever. Mark, how'd your week off go? Well, bone broth. I didn't even talk about that on it. It was good. <laughs> Look, Just any question we ask you, well, a, bone a, you didn't even listen because the latest trend is pork rinds. Pork rinds, mm. I know. I, pork I was rinds. listening. You and Bob both talked about pork rinds. Pork hey, rinds. pork rinds are good. Pork rinds not are good. You want to live a healthy right life? Pork rinds and bone broth is all you need. That's all mm. I gotta eat, man. Yeah, man. Chicken pork feet, rinds pork rinds, bone, bone broth. broth. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good stuff. Don't forget the chicken feet. That's also yeah. important too. Yeah. I don't know if I'm. A, I don't want to endorse chicken feet. Why don't you want to endorse them? Even if they got the little toenails clipped off, I still have I still have concerns about chicken feet. <laughs> anyway, Everyone back carried. on topic. Wade. Watermelon. Watermelon flavor was the culprit that took my food. Oh, it wasn't the it wasn't the dignity. airhead. It was watermelon. Watermelons are watermelon notorious toothbreakers. Something that is ninety percent water is just dead bound to break some teeth that's what i'm can saying. you suck an airhead instead of chew on it i, I want to eat more but i'm afraid to bite into one ever again they're you, yeah, yeah, yeah they'll you dissolve it, yeah what you just like if you do you what? like dry your mouth out completely put the airhead in your mouth <laughs> and just <laughs> <laughs> and try and eat it as like dust without well, moistening no, it I, at I, all i peel the wrapper and then i take a bite 
And then I kind of like move it around in my mouth, play with it with my back teeth a little bit. I don't want to hear this, man. I don't want this, man. You wait till you hear the airhead from in your mouth go, I'm going to breathe. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then you swallow it. You give it what it wants. Yeah, you got to tease it with the tongue and the teeth a little bit until it's just like, eh! And then you're like, oh, there's the squeak. You know what old people do, Wade? No. You could, you could peel the wrapper back, use your frail arthritic fingers to uh, bend it back and forth. If you have the strength in your hands, bend it until it breaks. <laughs> then you stick your tongue out. Make sure you don't accidentally whack it on any teeth because that'll just shatter them right out of your head too. Set it on your tongue, retract the tongue into the mouth, and it'll it'll dissolve delightfully in your warm, moist mouth cavity. Does so that, you does don't that like sound bite good? a piece off first? Because that's where it went wrong. I no, that's off. not what old people do. Frail people old... People say bite off with your back teeth, but like having a beard or a mustache, mine's trimmed up right now, but the bushy one, it was like it would just be stuck in my beard if I... You know, you gotta... Where are your back teeth located? Not where my lips are. I don't, I'm familiar with teeth and beards, and I cannot imagine how biting something with your back teeth gets it stuck. How do you bite something off? Like, if you're eating a chicken wing, how do you put the whole bone in your mouth? Like, how do you get it to your back teeth to bite? Why are we biting chicken wings with our back teeth? What is happening? (laughs) (laughs) The airhead is very similar. What you you do is you open your mouth, you, you peel the wrapper back a little further, you stick it in your mouth from like the side so it touches maybe the corner of your you know all those teeth you bypass to get to the back teeth (laughs) those work too how do you not bite they're gonna break mark biting with your back teeth it's an angle thing it has nothing to do with a beard you know what i'm starting to think more and more the problem might be can i get a youtube tutorial of how to eat an airhead with my back teeth please i've I've sat with you wade eating wings a lot have i not looked closely do you pop the whole wing into your mouth (laughs) no i do not swirl it around spit out the bone because i swear yeah bite (laughs) What? I was told by the dentist the reason ch- you're my I, I'm a nail biter too, but the reason front teeth tend to chip is biting things where you put like your your bottom teeth and your front teeth together and bite into something because your front teeth aren't really designed for that or whatever. So when you're biting into like my teeth itch now that we've been talking about this so much, it's very strange. They itch. My teeth itch. That's weird. How the fuck do your teeth itch? They itch. I don't know, man. It's I feel I mean, my teeth. I don't like it. I don't like it. I just Wade's need just to know cursed. how you bite an airhead without using. If your you front. pull my stream up, I will show you <laughs> on a <laughs> on a comb that I use to comb my hair. The physics and and geometric mm-hmm. problems you need to solve in order right. to bite something with only your back teeth. That mm-hmm. is the shape, approximate shape and size of an airhead. Let me know when you got it pulled up. All right, I've it's. I've got it pulled All right, up. I'm going to make my face extra big just for you. Okay, please. Here's the I'm face. I'm a little bit of a delay for ready? some reason, but I think that's on my end. So here's my comb. This is my airhead substitute. Okay. What you're going to want to do, right. open your mouth, open your uh-huh. chompers, uh-huh. Uh-huh. take the airhead, uh-huh. insert it directly in your mouth until it uh-huh. hits the back of your throat. <laughs> cool. Uh-huh. I'm glad you did that. Now take that out. Now what you're going to do is hold it at, about, at an angle pointing into your opposite cheek and then just put it between your back teeth and then just bite and see how I'm biting the comb with my back teeth and no other teeth and then you go yeah and you bite it off yeah but this is pressed up against my lip my lip cheek on the one side your airhead cannot simultaneously be so hard that it cracks your tooth and so soft that particles get caught in your beard when you take a bite in that way there's no such thing. I think what it is, this is a crystallized airhead that when he bites it, 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 it like yes. particularizes. And it, 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 our heads are not supposed to be like that. You did not eat an airhead. It's because it's so cold in my office. It, that's not how it works. I'm wearing what? socks and I never wear socks. That's not how Except it works. Shoes. That's not how sugar works. I don't know how temperature works. I legitimately don't think you ate an airhead. I think you found something colorful in your Did office. Did you spill a pixie stick into an area and it just sat there and sort of half congealed and then you picked up an unwrapped pile of sugar off the floor and thought, ah, an airhead. And then actually it's just like rock 
hard pixie stick chunks. Yeah, maybe we were operating under the wrong assumptions. Uh, Wade we described that Wade would know what an airhead was. <laughs> Wade I described... am literally holding a product that is sealed with the name Airheads well, on it. That's not cherry. the one that broke your tooth, yeah, is it? No. No, it was watermelon that broke my tooth, and I'm told hey, that if I put this make... between my thighs, I can preheat it before don't I bite even into it. make watermelon. Then airhead. you just I am solved placing your problem this between my. It's slobbery and wet, and that's really gross, but not between my thighs to heat up. Because he put, even though it's wrapped, mouth. he put it in his mouth oh. because... I had to learn how to eat sideways. Oh. All right, my <sighs> thighs are now preheating this cherry airhead. You could rub it between your hand. thighs is okay. And you that's know why streaming is better. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? As yeah, ineffective argument. as that argument may be, <laughs> it is irrefutable. Thank you. Thank you. There's not a thing else? that Mark could say to prove any of that <laughs> wrong. You don't get this kind of content in YouTube videos. You only get good content. If you want <laughs> shit content, you are the right place. Mm. True, truer words. True words, my friend. Uh, now, my eyes don't naturally go together like this. This is really awkward feeling. Can I just sit on it like an egg or something? Put it in your armpit. I said you oh. could rub it between your hands. It's frictional. Oh, why, no, Colin, why are you ruining this? Come okay. on. Okay. I really put it in my armpit first, but hands is also. You know where the warmest part of the human body is? It's ball my sack. Ass cheeks. Inside oh, okay. the anus. Oh, you ball do. sack is actually colder after, than the rest of the body. After Doctor Gorilla Hands, I don't know that that's true anymore. There's too much of a cavern. <laughs> it's, it's too much of a breeze in there. It's it like like cools it down right, right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get you. Yeah. There's stalactites, stalagmites, icicles. If you got stalag slope, mites or tights, Wade's pants. Is... Wade walks around a corner and gazes down a long tube. <laughs> the wind whistles. Wade says to himself. My anus will never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> if you can hear an echo from inside your own ass, you got problems, man. I could yodel into that puppy. <laughs> when, you, when you sit down to make number twos, they just come rattling out. <laughs> There's no making. It's like a never mind. I'm not gonna go. You know that boulder oh, from on, Indiana we're Jones? That's what way go to the. <laughs> Sitting on the toilet is equivalent to trying to swap the uh, the idol with the sandbag. It triggers it triggers an unstoppable chain of events. You gotta just hold on and wait for it to reach the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And that's, yeah, that's why, why streaming you... is better than YouTube. <laughs> Irrefutable. You know, I, I, I originally at the beginning I forgot that you know just video creation as its own uh, also exists in other forms. Now TikTok is another avenue by which people can make uh, standalone video content. You can stream on TikTok, but it it is technically short form video content, uh, whereas YouTube is more long form. There is some short form, but uh, that is another avenue of content creation. That we have TikTok not considered. is sick, dude. It is. Privacy concerns aside, like their algorithm is pretty impressive. I got it. Oh God! Don't post anything on tick 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 tick. Don't post anything, but watch it. It's great stuff. Oh, it's getting so soft. Okay, I think we've lost Wade. I'm just super excited. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to eat this right now, but I just wanted to make it soft. Did I did I say something wrong? Everyone is saying you can stream on TikTok. You can you can I go said, live on TikTok. I said you can, right? Yeah, They're I thought dumb, that was right? What you said. That is I, what I said. They're all no, idiots, no, you're not right? Even real dude, what's it matter what you yeah, said? Yeah, no. That's right. Hey, shut up. Hey, you're interrupting <laughs> our podcast. Shut up. Where's the yeah, keys? Can yeah, you dangle though. keys in front of their face again? They're, they're There's not supposed really to be here. hard. Is there a button, like a pants button in this airhead? <laughs> There's a perfectly round, hard spot. Right? Is my tooth sealed in this one? That doesn't even make sense. Why would it be? A... What? Those are cannot be airheads. I'm not going to pull up the stream and look. I'm just going to assume. Yeah. Wade can't, can't, can't read. A... And what he's holding is a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> and he, he doesn't heads. know what airheads are. Cherry Jolly Rancher. Just sound it out, Wade. Hey, Rancher. Oh, God, you're right. Hey, what the hell? 
I saw that Lorelai. They Lorelai just blocked butthole on my stream. <laughs> Block the term butthole. How dare you? How Chat, do you dare see this button you? lump? Anyway. How dare you? I think our debate is pretty much settled. Uh the question that we raised or not, this I'm lump? not sure. Do you this see is that? Oh, and now Automod is going crazy because everyone's trying. Look at what you've done. Look at what on. you. My mods are out of control. My mods Pretty are sure gone you rogue. did that, Mark. No, they clearly. That's hard as can be. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> was there anything else we were going to talk about? I honestly. Well, do we reach a conclusion? That's I, what I took also my just tooth. Took a YouTube, YouTube took my tooth. Well, okay, maybe. I, they've uh -huh. taken many things. I will say that, like, I don't think that people who stream are in making the wrong choice. Like, definitely there's benefits to it. It's for me, uh, me, I prefer to make uh, individual videos, whether it be on YouTube or whatever. Right now it's YouTube. I prefer to make that because I like the process of it. I, I enjoy it. I, I, th I feel more satisfied with the finished product. And I think that that's part of what it is. I always like finished products. I, li I like that. With streaming, it's always felt so open-ended that unless it was like a charity stream where there's a, a, a like an arc to it and there's an end, like it's it's it feels less tangible. You know, it feels inconclusive. It feels open-ended, and I never like things to be open-ended. You know. So, uh, yeah, hmm. that was what I would say. I don't think that streamers are sad losers. I don't think that. Wade thought that, but not me. Not I did. Me. I still do. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm part of the community, I know what we are. Yeah. And we're still superior than those dorks on YouTube. Even though I post, I'm both. Oh, God, I'm a hybrid. No, you know who we're better than? Hmm. It's people who aren't TikTok. streamers. No. Oh. Remember, remember the joke, the TwitchCon guy? All right, the joke is dead. God, What's I thought it? that was funny. What is remember joke? that guy at TwitchCon who was like, somebody asked him why he didn't like, if why he didn't like interacting with his fans or whatever, and his response was effectively, mm. like, I, uh, I'm not saying that because I'm a streamer, I'm better than you, but like, we're different, you know. I'm not the <laughs> same as you. Then that and everyone like lost their shit. That was like five years ago version of all the streamers now who were like, five dollars. You can't afford five dollars. You want me to stream for you, and you're not even gonna subscribe to me. Yeah. Five dollars. That that uh, happened again this past week. Uh, where there was some guy who went viral on like live stream fail or something because he has, he has every stream he has like a donation goal, mm -hmm. and if they if chat doesn't meet the donation goal he just cuts stream and he was giving chat shit he was like no i'm ending it look at that you've only donated 45 of the 50 dollars i'm ending it right now oh yeah what the fuck? what's wrong with people man maybe streamers are worse no 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 god if we wanted to go through youtubers dirty laundry i mean that's have to look at YouTubers various prisons <laughs> like it's uh like every it's a shitty people across the board it's just i i think it's just mm. boils down to preferential of how you like to create things um as at the end I of the day it's entertainment that, that's what it is at the end of the day and people like to consume entertainment differently so i would say some of the shitty youtubers are probably worse than some of the shitty streamers because this is the only reason i say that when you're live whatever you say even if you want to word it a different way is just already out there and gone it's out of your hands YouTube, you have, unless you're streaming on YouTube, but videos, you have the opportunity to edit <laughs> and remove things you say that sound really stupid or outlandish or you shouldn't say. And if it still makes it past that filter, or even if you have an editor, multiple filters and gets out there, then you got a, then you got even a worse problem because you're not even self-aware mm -hmm. of the fact that you're an idiot and a monster and stupid and evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Twitch, you know, I, I can see obviously people say stupid stuff on Twitch, but I can see where sometimes someone's trying to make a point mm. and like something they say gets taken out of context and it's like, oh my God, they said that thing. And one, they're either saying it sarcastically or they're saying it, you know, as part of a bigger thing, whatever, or they're just an idiot and misworded things. Mm. But yeah, with YouTube, if you post something on YouTube and it gets out there and it's like, I, I, I don't know, you had to one, say it and then two, 
let it pass your filter and or an editor's filter and everyone's just like that's fine that's a good thing to say let's post that on the internet so that's why streaming is irrefutably better yeah All right, cool. Well, that's a good closing Kinda argument. Really good. I should not have eaten Mark? that. No, no. Was was off. I was just flabbergasted by the amount of truth he was dishing out, and I felt <laughs> humbled by it. Dude, if you cut me open from like chin to ball sack, only truth will spill out. Mm, uh, what does truth look like to you? It's very messy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see the truth of me? Probably a bit more God. fat on the truth than there should be, too, if I had to be honest. <laughs> That's right. not good. That's not yeah. good at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Cut anyway. me open chin to balls and my fatty truth will be exposed to the world. Okay, man. Why chin to balls? Why just the chin? <laughs> the other parts aren't full of truth. You know what's in there. Yeah. <laughs> you think that Come on, be man. Mouth or true, Mark? No, it can't be all truth. Mouth. How's he alive? It's like cutting open a puffer fish. There's a poison gland in there. You don't want the lie <laughs> sack <laughs> out of there. You know the lie sack I'm spilling out. No. Is that is that how is that what happens when people are liars? Their lie sack is like <laughs> leaky or just big. It's like it dogs squeeze the extra glands. lie juice into the yeah. body. <laughs> yeah, occasionally go to the doctor and squeeze out your lie glands and clean them out a little bit for you. They get that, real nasty. You express your lie glands. <laughs> express your lie glands. Yeah, you got your lie gl glands expressed. You can do it at home, but it's, it's very tricky. <laughs> it's actually it's great if you have a significant other. It's great to have your partner express your lie glands. Oh, really, my God, it's a yeah. bonding experience. So sometimes you don't want to expose them to your lie glands, and then you got to avoid them too, and maybe get like a, a parent or something to help. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, it's like District Nine. If you get lie juice sprayed on your face, you become a lie monster. Yeah. <laughs> Real nasty, sticky substance. Hard to get <sighs> out of. These aren't terrible analogies, you know. These are, these are, these could work. The District <laughs> Nine one kind of kind of works. I'm not familiar with District 9. Is good that one of the what? Hunger Games places? It's a great no, movie. It is a good movie. No, oh, it's a it, really it's a good standalone? movie. It's a okay. District 9 came out in the mid 2010s, I want to say, early 2010s. The effects are stunning in it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. fantastic. It's a great demonstration of how to uh, 3D animate uh, characters. Mm -hmm. It's like alien life characters. Awesome. Yeah, super I, awesome. I, I saw Alien break, tech is awesome. Yeah, uh, Corridor just did a breakdown of it uh, in terms of the oh, effects really? on their VFX reacts. So I think the most recent one, oh. and, and well, they I'm... they broke it down. I was like, oh my god, that actually is incredible. Like I cannot tell the difference. Like that is probably the most lifelike thing, uh, and it helps because they're aliens, obviously. But it is easily one of the most lifelike things. And it was many years ago, and it was on a budget too. Like it was on a low budget. Yeah, it was not a huge blockbuster movie. They mm. made it on a relatively small budget. <laughs> Yeah. I, I have always thought that was an underrated movie because it came out and people generally liked it, but it sort of faded away. It's yeah. a great movie. It, it stands up. The, the visual effects are fantastic. 2009. Wow. Older yeah. than I thought. Yeah. And, and and if correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was the originally in development, it was supposed to be like a Halo movie. I, I'm pretty sure. I think I remember that. Yeah, as I heard being true or something like that. Something about that, and then it got changed over to that. Um, and they do kind of look like elites. Like they look like if someone saw a picture of an elite and and then were forced to like invent a species around it or something. Yeah, I, I can't remember the specifics of why or why not or, or how it changed over or something like that. But District Nine, I definitely enjoyed that movie. It was it was very very good, and the story was good. Like it actually had a yeah. compelling story. So mm -hmm. you should watch it, Wade. Okay, I, I, I will. I, I didn't realize that it was a its own thing. I it's, always thought when a, people referenced District 9, it was like one of the... Aren't the Hunger Games different zones called districts? Yeah, they're called districts. Yeah. and that, I think I just always that's, assumed that's what was being referenced. That's entirely possible because the Hunger Games are way more popular than this, this yeah. one sci-fi movie ever was. But uh, I actually need to uh, run to the bathroom really quick. All right, right go back. for it. Sorry, boys. That's okay. Are we taking a tight five? Well, I'm not. I'm you can if you want, you but can. I just... I'll uh, carry I, on alone. Good, I'll get yeah, the insult water, going. I really want more water. Go so for Mark, it, yeah. Hold, hold the line and don't spread any lies while we're gone. All right, cool. Don't express your glands. All right, cool, good.
All right, now that they're gone, I want to tell you why YouTube's so much better than streaming. It's just so many ways that you can be creative and stuff like that. And anyone who chooses streaming has just got to be dumber than dirt. These are Wade's words and not mine. I am not speaking from my own mind. I'm speaking from Wade's words. Uh, he thinks that just streaming is just the dead end of all... <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. It really just comes down to personal preference. So I don't want anyone uh, thinking that one is better than the other. Like, especially in terms of, like, the people that try to do streaming versus YouTube as, like, a career path. And I always advise against looking at it as a career path um, because creation has to always start from a place of wanting to express yourself and whatever creative aspect you're trying to do, uh, it has to come from that core. And if you don't enjoy what you're expressing about yourself, then you're never going to enjoy doing it. Um, if you also streaming is good because it's, it, it can be less about a creative endeavor and more about a social endeavor. And that is one thing that streaming has that YouTube does not. You look at the active chat in any stream, it is way more active than any comment section of say, YouTube. Um, you know, YouTube's comment section hasn't been usable in a long time, and I doubt anyone is meeting another person in, like, uh, YouTube chat. Um, streaming does allow for a lot more social things to go on, and that is beneficial about that. If you, if you are a social person and you're a naturally entertaining social person, then you could have a good career in streaming, uh, or at least a satisfying hobby in streaming just because it's a, an outlet for a different aspect of yourself. It's not so much creative. It's more just like accessing social. So it's, you know, it's, it's up to everybody. There really is nothing about it. Uh, but other things that I wanted to talk about in my life is which zone in World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft is the best zone ever made. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, the Grizzly Hills in World of Warcraft is the best zone that ever existed. And I am not alone in my thought process behind this, but I, I, I cannot tell you how beautiful that zone is. If you've ever played World of Warcraft and you have been there, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't been there and you've played World of Warcraft, then you need to go to the Grizzly Hills and experience it. I listen to the Grizzly Hills ambient. I You go on YouTube right now and you search up Grizzly Hills music and you go, there's a, like an hour long mix of Grizzly Hills that shows you the landscape, the, the, the area, and it plays the music. It's the one, the most beautiful music, I think, in World of Warcraft. Uh, and number two, it's just such a gorgeous zone. It's fantastic. I love the Grizzly Hills. Anyway, uh, so the reason I sp hello. Hello. Hi, what's up? Not much. Uh, talk about Warcraft? Yeah, man. Grizzly Hills. You ever been there? That's all I talked uh, about. My face kind of looked like that before I shaved recently. Ha ha ha. Ha ha No, it's an old zone, actually. Wrath of the Lich King. It but maybe? I, I don't remember all the places. Jesse took me on quite an adventure where we did a whole bunch of old... Raids? Are they called raids? Yeah, well, the raids are dungeons. It depends on what, what you're doing. Okay, yeah, we did a whole bunch of older stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Some of the cosmetics and whatnot. And yeah. Yeah, I actually grinded up a character. I didn't use the level up thing. Mm -hmm. I actually grinded a character from like 1 to 100 or whatever, 110. Mm -hmm. We were doing some of, the, some of those along the way. Yeah. Anyway, I was mainly talking about like game music that stuck with me because uh, the Grizzly Hills in World of Warcraft, I actually listened to it recently and it just made me remember how much I loved it and being in that zone. And like game music in general, I think it's just something that a lot of people overlook. Um, We're talking about game music? I mean, it, tangentially, yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's like in World of Warcraft, there's this zone called Grizzly Hills and the music in there is just Probably some of the most beautiful game music I've ever heard in my life. It's it's so it, it it invokes a lot of memories for me, which is number one why it's important. But also the first time I went into that zone and I listened to music, I'm like, holy shit, this is too beautiful. What the hell is happening? Like the whole <laughs> zone is gorgeous, but the music is it, it it enters your soul. That kind of it's that kind of music. It just really just sticks to you. Oh, Howling Fjord is great. Don't get me wrong. The intro to Howling Fjord is great, but being in Grizzly Hills, you would never get tired of that music. Never, ever. As a... 
A lot of good times. But game music in general, just like I, I thoroughly enjoy really well done game music and ambiance. I don't normally notice or pay attention to the music all that much because I guess I'm just like so caught up in whatever the story is, what I'm trying to accomplish. But like some of the games, like I remember really, really enjoying like Skyrim's soundtrack, mm-hmm. even oh, just like, yeah. the opening, the opening like menu oh. music, uh, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, any Star Wars game, Star Wars music's always like been amazing to me. So like all the Star Wars games here and like the different themes play and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember WoW's music all that much. I, again, I only played it like enough to level up one character or whatever and I was kind of like talking to a friend along the way so I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention but mm-hmm. um, there is something to be said about music that just re- like I've noticed with movies more I haven't noticed it in games more much movies and shows I've definitely noticed the soundtracks a lot more lately mm-hmm. um, trying to watch shows like The Mandalorian and stuff where they have like different characters like the Star Wars universe characters have I'm sure a lot of I think that Marvel, probably everything, where certain characters have their own theme mm-hmm. so like there's Captain America's theme or Luke's theme and so on mm-hmm. and so forth I've been much more um, on top of noticing when those kinds of things start playing. Yeah. Um, but I haven't done it as much in gaming. Dude, I, I really should focus on gaming, Theming too. is something that is neglected <laughs> a lot in movies. Uh, not not so much lately with the advent of, like, superhero movies because it's iconic for, like, superheroes to have themes. Um, but, like, there's so much emotional resonance and inherent nostalgia when you hear a theme evolve. You know what I mean? Like, you hear it... Like, the, the Avengers is probably a good example of it. Like, the Avengers theme... It really had a lot of power in the last mm-hmm. Avengers movie when it came up for that climactic moment. That moment literally would not have been as impactful if it hadn't had the build of the characters, number one, yes, the story, number two, but the music also mm. being there to showcase. Dude, it was amazing. It yeah. really was. And it's like uh, so many things, movies these days. They often will score for emotion as if they want people to feel a certain way, and they won't. Evo- they won't score for like themes and like stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's why a lot of uh, of um, uh, Will Wilbert Norman's uh, Skimbo Bumbos, uh, Flumby Dum. Uh, oh boy! What movies you talking about, Mark? Uh, Inception Man. Who did the guy? Philip J. Hoffman. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what's his name? Help. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio? No, the director. To... Uh, oh, the director. Um, no! Inception! <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Wes Anderson. Uh, uh, no, no. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan, yeah. And Hans Zimmer, by by extension, yes. Uh-huh, uh, that's uh-huh. what, like Hans Zimmer Ooh. has done all the scoring for Christopher Nolan's movies, I believe. And Hans oh, Zimmer is a good example of making very simple but iconic themes for for uh, for Nolan did the Batman like movies that. too right the yeah the trilogy, trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Dark Knight mm-hmm. trilogy yeah. yeah was the music good uh, those were really good that, I can't again the Hans Zimmer Hans Zimmer is really good at that kind of stuff like the, it's uh, like he has a like some videos on YouTube and masterclass I think that I, I've meant to watch but I haven't but you just like getting musical iconic things that people can remember and relate to and build emotions off of is is so Oh, it's so overlooked. It's not. It's hard to do, but also, like, if you get the right people to do it, it why wouldn't you do it? You know what I mean? It's yeah. why in a lot of the videos that I make, I have, like, I, I enjoy recalling certain musical themes to it because it, it puts people in the right mindset and it makes the connection obvious. Um, so, like, I like, yeah, I just like that a lot. I think it's not done at all. I haven't seen Tenet yet. I, I want to, but I haven't ever seen what? It. Tenet. The latest Christopher Nolan one, but I oh, haven't. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen any. <laughs> yeah, music's pretty good. I like music too. <laughs> it's weird for me to yap on about music so much because I do not listen to music in my spare time. I, I don't pursue music, and uh, I've fallen out of like trying to pursue music a while, like two years ago. I think um, I just meant to. Uh... I like game music though. I like scores. I like soundtracks. I like ambiance. I have a lot more appreciation for it. That, so through doing Twitch and YouTube, I've gained a much larger appreciation for animation and sound than I think I ever did before. Mm. Like, I never really thought about it before. But, uh, yeah, definitely just the process of animating something. Like, people have made animations for us or whatever. And then, um, yeah, sound and trying to get sound right and trying to do, like, the music and stuff and fill it Mm. in. Because sometimes I'll watch content like, man... 
wish I'd put some background music or something behind me and it's like trying to find the right music. And then you watch something like, you know, like Avengers, like Endgame and Infinity War and just like the sound is so fucking powerful. The movie's great, the acting's great, everything else. But like this, like you said, there's some moments where it's 100% the background stuff that just takes foothold and takes like over the whole scene. And it's like, that's part of the reason I think why Star Wars, it was so good. The sound in Star Wars was fucking ridiculous. Um, that opening crawl and just like it really sets the tone for the sound and everything the sound of the lightsabers uh, just everything i don't know i like i remember when you and i were talking and you said sound is even more important than visual i think i think you said this i don't want to quote you wrong but i think you said sound is more important than even like getting higher quality video early mm -hmm. on yeah and, absolutely uh, i 100 percent agree I, I feel that way too after experiencing really great sound and things yeah i feel that video is more than half audio like video is 60 percent to 70 percent audio of the substance of it because people can lose a story people can lose track of characters but even if you don't understand music and you don't know it on an expert level like i don't know music on an expert level um but i, I know some of it but even if you were just you, you never read music in your life or never took a music class you would still understand the emotions of it because it's so tied into the human experience like it's it resonates with people it, it's it's a language that is unconscious and people can feel it it's it's less words it's more just pure emotion and thought put into uh the the subtext of of your content that people don't even need to understand yeah they they don't need to consciously understand it it's it's World of Warcraft game music. <laughs> I'm not gonna get DMCA'd for playing <laughs> World of Warcraft's game music. You might. Uh, oh yeah, I might. You never know. You're not playing the game. <laughs> yeah, whatever. If I if I get my my Twitch banned, oh no. <laughs> what will I do, guys? What will I do? Hey. What? What would I do? What yeah, that seems like a question for you to answer. What, what would I do? What would you? What would you what do? What would I do? What would you do? Oh, man. TikTok streams, baby. <laughs> Take this podcast to TikTok. We're gonna become the biggest TikTok podcast. Podcast is the way of the future. I tell you what, though. Well, probably. You know, you're probably not wrong about that. That's probably correct. That, like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with you on the whole music thing. It feels... I have a hard time, I guess, expressing it because I feel like I agree with what you're saying exactly, but to me, it's obvious. To me, the music is an important part of almost anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that I, I guess, focus on a lot and think about, even when I'm watching stuff where you can tell they didn't think about the music. Mm -hmm. um but it's it's not even like like original film scores and original soundtracks for stuff can can be very effective or can be very terrible but it's even just if you're playing popular music if you're playing stuff that wasn't recorded for your purpose mm -hmm. there's so much impact that you could have just by having a smart music director having someone who understands your show and the message or your movie and the message or whatever mm -hmm. and understands whatever genre like people usually specialize or have something that they go to but whatever it is they like you know there's you can you don't need original scoring to have music that's intensely impactful and mm. perfect and it elevates everything that's happening visually to a whole another level yeah um but yeah it's it is something i mean it's hard i think it it's easy to look at something and be like oh they didn't even care about the music they overlooked it and mm. i think it's hard to tell if they overlooked it or if they got the best, you know, they got the best music director they could and they did what they could, but there's licensing restrictions and there's a lot of technical issues with using other people's music or making good music on your own. It's not, you know, it's as easy as it, as it is modernly to produce really good sounding music with one person and like a MIDI controller and a good audio workstation. Mm. It's still not just like anyone who's trained and talented can just always make a banger. Like yeah. it, it does take, you know, some skill and you need the time and the investment to really get to a good finished product, even if you have a person who's capable of it. But 
yeah, it's something that you when a project is missing music, when it has crappy music or that it was an afterthought, you can tell. And it doesn't necessarily ruin the whole thing, but it's it's an entirely missed opportunity. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Well, I, uh, when it comes to like music and stuff, I, I recently came across a quote from Adam Savage. Do you guys remember Mythbusters Adam Savage? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said something recently where he said, there's no recipe for success, but there is a recipe for, su for failure. And that's thinking you have the recipe for success. And hmm. I, I feel like music is one of those things where like so many people come out with like a hit song and they never quite replicate the fame from like another one of their songs. And some of the bands like, you know, that have a lot of really big hits and stuff. It's like just really impressive. Cause I mean, it's really, really hard to figure out what it is that makes, you know, some of the theme songs so much better than others or so much more like, I don't know, powerful to hear uh, or music addicting and stuff like that. And I thought that was a really good quote. Cause like trying to think about it, it's like, yeah, I have no idea if someone asked us like, how did we get where we are? Not that we're the mo most successful people in the world or anything, but like, it's really hard to think about like what we would do differently, what we would do to find success versus kind of just stumbling into it a little bit. I thought that was a really, a really good quote. I just wanted to share it because it came to mind when we we're talking about sound. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Like, mm -hmm. uh, are you, is that quote suggesting that the recipe for failure is being certain that you ha are on the right path the whole time or like that you... So, he he was answering a Patreon question, and the question was basically like, knowing what you know now, if you were to start Mythbusters over, like, Pat, if you could go tell yourself, you know, or whatever, you could go into the past, what, what would you change about how Mythbusters started, and, you know, would you, would you change anything from the get-go? And he basically said, no, I wouldn't change anything, because we ended up being very successful, having a product we loved, and we kind of, like, slowly figured out what made it successful, what we enjoyed about it, what we wanted to work on and focus on as time went on, mm. and, uh... And he was he said he'd be afraid with messing up the formula that got them there because uh he doesn't really know for sure you know what exactly made it so good from the get-go but he loved the product that they had and where it went from there but to assume that he knew what made it successful and to be able to do that from the start he's afraid he'd mess up with the overall product or where it would end up going right. i think is what he was implying is that he mm. it, it, it found success it was a successful show it wasn't him or jamie even that came up with the idea someone came to them and wanted them to be part of the show that they were pitching yeah um so it wasn't even like their original idea. Uh, so he said like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to mess with the thing because I don't want to assume I know what the recipe for success is. We found it, we were very fortunate too. And it's one of the best things we've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. um, so it was him answering that question led him to say like, he didn't know the recipe for success, but he knew the recipe for failure involved thinking people knew the recipe for success. Right. right. That, um, I watch his YouTube, well, I think it's his tested, which is features yeah, yeah. him and a lot of other that's, people. And I that's where he was answering one of the patrons. I follow him. Like, yeah, that's sort of just indicative of his like ethos when it comes to design work in general, because there are a lot of quotes of his about that. Like uh, in another recent video, he was working on. He has a uh, the the channel has a spot from Boston Dynamics, Boston Dynamics, the the dog. Yeah robot thing they have one of those for the purpose of adam is is like doing silly things with it and, and trying out engineering it basically testing it uh and he did an episode where he was trying to um not humanize but like personalize it uh, i don't know make the yeah. robot seem more approachable right yeah yeah he's yeah. trying to make it seem like a pet as opposed to a machine so he mm. was like putting he made some cardboard like things and he was velcroing different things and trying and he in, in that episode he made this big statement about like you designers feel like they have to figure out what they want to do like you can stare at a blank page and have a thing you need to make but have no idea what you actually want to do or what's right or like you have a project that you need to paint it and you can't pick the color and he told a story about he was making this sculpture and he had finished the sculpture and he just needed to paint it and he spent forever trying to figure out what what color was this thing supposed to be? What what like purely aesthetically? It was an art piece. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I could not decide. And I just looked around and I and I had these two paints and I, I they were candy cane colors. And so I just spent like a whole day painting this sculpture, this color that was hideous. It was ugly. And I just painted it, it like a giant arm candy cane. And it looked horrific. And it was the wrong color from the very moment I began. But when I looked at it, when it was done, 
it spoke to me almost immediately and it i figured out what color it was supposed to be because that how jarring and how wrong that looked was inspiring and his whole ethos of like everything he does is you 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 don't have to start by doing the right thing mm -hmm. you just have to start by doing something and even if it's the wrong thing the progress of realizing that that's incorrect yeah or realizing that something doesn't work is mm -hmm. the step that you needed to get closer to what you are supposed to be doing yeah. for whatever the project is yeah. and that's like a really i don't know that's not how i work on things and i get that a lot if i mm -hmm. get if i get a project like if i get a sponsored video or something and it's like record this game and and do these talking points i look at the brief and i think about it and i'm like okay need to make sure it's good I need to and like that's just absolutely paralyzing i don't know if you guys have ever felt like that but it's a it, the, the adam savage approach is very interesting in the way that it applies to other things not just his sort of design and engineering work that he does. I mean, yeah. I've never felt... Oh, go, go. No, you go. No, you go. I've never been a super creative person. I've never thought of myself as being that creative. I have a decent amount of charisma. I can talk and I can talk out my ass when I need to and stuff. But when it came to like, let's just take school for an example. I worked best under pressure. So if I was like last minute, it was be like, bam, crunch, get it done, do what I got to do. But like art was always one of the biggest things I had to struggle with. Anything where I had to like come up with my own design. Like I like building Legos. My kind of creativity is like building in Minecraft, but I always have something I'm referencing. I very rarely does my brain like naturally just go outside the box and think of something creative on its own. I'm used to either trying to replicate or follow instructions to get somewhere. Or in like the case of a paper, it's like, you know, it's again, it's a tried and true formula. It's like, I'm trying to prove something. So get a few points that back up what I'm trying to prove and go on so forth from there. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like making something, if there's not a guide to follow along the way, I have no idea. Like my, my I'm thinking of like, hmm, how do I tackle this problem and solve it? I've just never been in a position where I've had to do that a whole lot. So my brain doesn't naturally go anywhere when it comes to that stuff. I'm just like, let's find where somebody else did it and try to copy their method. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I wish I had a more creative brain, but just not that's not my strong suit i i think you do i think everyone does it's just that you haven't trained it like for example yeah. uh i'm i'm really good at editing like i'm confident in saying that um and when it comes to the projects that i've made when it gets to the editing phase i know exactly what to do uh, it's not even a question of like maybe this should go here or there because uh, for, before i even started filming it I, I had a rough idea of what it was going to be, and then when you film it, you know exactly what you have, you see the whole picture. So when it comes to editing, and, and the benefit of me being able to do that is like, I go into the editing program and I'm like, okay, this is going to take me about 12, 14 hours. I know exactly where every piece of thing needs to go. I need to figure it out in the minutia, but I'm going to see what feels right as it goes along, but I know the general mood of it. Um, and so I can look at a whole thing and be like, oh, I've got the plan in my head because I've been there a thousand times. Whereas with writing, like this past week I was writing, it's it's newer to me. So it's, it's a lot more difficult because I can't see the whole picture. I can't see exactly what's going to go where. There's a lot more figuring it out. Um, but when it comes down to getting good at that, it's just like you practice so much that you know what generally works in general situations. So like... The, the brain is always coming up with like random information to shoot out there for creative ideas. Creativity is always happening. You don't have to try. That's an unconscious thing. Conscious thing is trying to filter what's the right thing and you don't know until you try. So I think, Bob, that that, that mindset is beautiful and I like I, I love that because it, it, it's it's right and the only reason you get good at stuff is because you've done all the wrong ways <laughs> and you know generally what the good ways are gonna be so uh, I think that uh, yeah I think you how can much, be how much do you think self-confidence goes into it because self-confidence is something I've battled with a lot and in some aspects of life I have a lot more self-confidence than I ever used to like high school me, I was not confident in anything. Like, I think I would have been a much better basketball player, for example, when I played basketball, if I was confident in myself and my abilities, because I wasn't bad. And there were moments where I could certainly shine, but going into games, I always had so much self doubt and then it would play out that way. And even doing YouTube and Twitch, like early on, I had zero self-confidence in doing this. Now streaming, it's like, I, I'm so comfortable being myself, it doesn't bother me. But if I have to like, when we were doing the singing improv, 
singing is something I've never been comfortable with in front of people. I'll make dick jokes and I'll sit there and I'll flail around like an asshole and make myself look like a dick all day long. But the moment like I have to try something that I feel like takes talent to do, I have so much doubt and so little confidence in myself that I feel like it hampers me even further. And I feel like creativity, that's another thing with creativity too, is I could probably be a lot more creative if I was confident in my ability to do it. But I just have so much doubt in myself that I think that that hampers me even more from venturing into that aspect of my brain and trying to be creative with things. It's like watching you come up with concepts, Mark, like watching you come up with um, Heist and so many of the fun YouTube things you've done. I'm like, man, and then like, I'll be, I'll be sitting around and I'll like have this idea like, oh, I want to do something with that. And then I'll have this thought like, well, I probably couldn't pull it off all that well. And then it would just look stupid. Might as well not waste my time with it. And that has caused me to not do so much. That, that thought of like, eh, probably couldn't do it the way I envisioned. Why bother trying? Well, here's, it, here, <laughs> yeah. here's a counterpoint. I want to I wanna interject real quick because everyone remembers the heist and a date with Markiplier. They don't remember Markiplier's secret touch. They don't remember. <laughs> Whoa, I do. I love that. I know you were that in that. Video. If you think back to that video, that is so garbage <laughs> compared to the stuff I make but now. But you did it. You, but, you exactly, and that's it, that's my point. That's the difference. I I I go into that knowing it might suck. At the point, at the time, I was like, ah, oh, it's good. Yeah, it's fine. But looking I back, good. it was a interview oh, with ooh. Slenderman, dude, when I was wearing your fucking suit and the weird wig and the Okay, that was good. I, I do admit that was good, but it was technically terrible. <laughs> like, from a yeah, technical standpoint, <laughs> awful. The content was good, but like, from a technical standpoint, very, very bad. And remember, that only existed because we failed at the previous video. And we That's learned, yeah, we, did. we learned from that yeah. one, that didn't work. So we needed to come up with a simpler idea. And so, it, like, my point here is just like, I get the confidence thing is is a big play. And not everyone can have confidence um, it, all the time. But a lot of the time, it's just like looking at it and being like, yeah, it's going to suck because I'm not good at it yet. Uh, you know, yeah. that, that helps a lot. It helps me a lot. That's a key lot point I because... I didn't have self-confidence in almost anything. I knew I was a good student and I thought I could be like a good lawyer. That was like, that's what I clung to through junior high, high school, and most of college was like, okay, I'm, I, get, I get good grades. I think I can talk, even though I can't do it right in this moment. At the time though, I could talk without sounding like an idiot. Um, and I, I thought I could pull that off. And that was like, that's all I really had confidence in myself for. Um, but through doing this, through doing the tour, different things, branching out and just through repetitiveness, I've definitely gained confidence in public speak. I, I, public speaking was something that terrified me. Now, I don't sweat it at all. When we were doing the shows, I was never really scared about the public speaking aspect. It was more so like, am I gonna be funny or am I gonna be an asshole or am I gonna ruin the whole show for everyone? <laughs> um, am I gonna screw up and like, like you know, go up through improv and just blank and you guys will be like, oh, Aunt Sally. Yeah, I, and I'll, be, I'll just be like, Yep, it's uh, Uncle. No, you're wrong. I'm Uncle Ted. Uh, uh, you know, like you're calling a very specific person out, or maybe that's just my reaction to that. Uh, no, no, I wasn't. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. Yeah. No, no, there was a. I think you're referencing one scene in particular that I've Tyler. I've talked about this publicly. There was a moment on, where where we did a scene, and uh, I forget what the whole story was. But was basically, it in I the hotel there, room in Australia. Maybe what what which one I guess are you trying to remember because well there's one I think it was in LA there's one in LA moments. where I was I think we were actually live and I was pretending to be like a kid I had like my thumb oh, yeah. in my mouth and I was trying to carry a blanket and uh, Tyler walked out and he's like mom and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and I was like yep it's me mama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I thought we all did very, very well. We all had our moments of wonders, and LA was my worst show by long, by a long bit. We yeah. both, we all had our moments of like bumbling, but I think we laughed our way through it. We got through it all. I don't think any of us was necessarily like, I don't know, problematic on stage at all. Because I mean, pe the audience always enjoyed what we did, even if it was stupid as fuck. Some of our opening bits, like the the multiple headed scientist or whatever, like I thought the, in practice, I was like, this is so stupid, but everyone seemed to eat it up. I um, liked it. I don't know why you guys hated it so much. I enjoyed I, that I game. I thought the five-headed scientist was good 
except I frequently ended up directly next to Ethan. And <laughs> Ethan couldn't ever remember what what was happening. Yeah, Ethan's <laughs> problem was he listening. He literally couldn't stay focused long enough to get the four words to get back to him. And then whoever was directly following him was always like, just absolutely screwed. Yeah, I, think, I thought that was a hilarious bit, but it, we just struggled. With I, it I think sometimes. he thought it was like a come up with the first word that pops in your head yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, he I did. Remember an example of one of the things he said, because I do remember we'd be like, it was one word per person. So it'd be like a question like, what are you guys going to do about global warming? And then the with would be Ethan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, I was always jealous that you guys got to do singing um, improv. <laughs> Can I just say that? But then we did it. You didn't? I always got to do rapping. Oh, improv. you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys always got like show tunes or stuff, and you just be like, "Oh, you!" And I, and then I would. I only ever got to rap. I swear to God. It's because, and you're right. It's because Dan targeted you for that. <laughs> that was unfair, Dan. Yeah, Dan did target you for for rap like all the time. Yeah. I, I feel like Tyler it's because I reacted. It is. Section. It like, well, is exactly. I pissed yeah. off a city. Tyler pissed off a whole country. <laughs> so yeah. I guess there's a little difference there. The I, uh, I, speaking of all your old content, though, Mark, I don't know why. I guess mm. it's because you said you know what people remember. You know what content of yours I remember and will remember till the end of my days? What? Because it was so actually just shocking and not at all the content itself. What? Do you remember when you used to do the dangerous <laughs> let's plays? Oh yeah, yeah. Or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Do you remember when you played Surgeon Simulator on your iPad mm -hmm. in an ice bath? Yep, I remember. And you shivered so badly that you dropped your iPad into the bath. Yeah, I remember. And then you were just so sad because was, you yeah. bricked your iPad and that was the whole video. You know what the saddest part of that was? Is it, it, was it came back for a bit afterwards. Mm. Like I, I did the rice thing, I dried it off. It came back alive and I'm like, oh, thank God. And then it died. It came back long enough to say hi and then bye. <laughs> Oof. I just, because I remember that. I was watching that and I was like, ah, oh, it's funny. Ah, he's, he's just played up the shivering. What? And then you dropped it and you went from being like, <gasps> to just being like, no, no. No, I also I did thought, not just do that. I no. felt like I ruined the recording or something too. <laughs> <laughs> but I was running an external card, but I was yeah. streaming, so I was just like, man, if I screwed this up, this sucks. <laughs> that would be even worse if you did that and then you couldn't even like get a video out of it. Yeah, it was just it just happened and you you just out and I've had. God, but man. anyway, those were the days, man. That was, <laughs> man, that the, was the, the good first Markiplier few content. years of my channel were a while the west of content. I will give it <laughs> what that. What was the yeah. worst idea you ever went through with and like regretted making a video? For me, it was joining you for this fucking sour challenge. Ha -ha. Oh, that was I a mean, great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that one. I was feeling like I sick. still don't enjoy. I 100 still don't enjoy sour stuff after that. That was probably the most brutally. Uh, that that that's bad. the that's the most evidence that people have that I'm a masochist, which I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was a bad idea. Yeah, that was a bad idea. But you did some stuff with like uh, on like the, you did like a treadmill gameplay where mm -hmm. you're like on the treadmill and stuff. Like yeah. you don't that have any. That's fine. It's just space. Crazy yeah, knees. knees it's fine. Bit. I, I pretty much knew I was going to fall eventually, so that's why I put the phone back there. I was just like, I'm going to run until my legs kind of don't work anymore, so, and then I did that. My favorite stupid thing we did was whenever, um, was it Bob? Was it you that shot the arrow that, like, broke the neighbor's... Oh, I watched that clip just the other day. Oh, did you? That's such I a love funny that. video. I, yeah. watched, I circle back and watch that from time to time to remember yeah. those videos. I went oh, and hid in the God. house while you guys went over there. I, I was like, I'm just gonna go hide. It's. I'm sad. It's not in the video. It's not like legal or smart to do. But yeah. when we actually went over and talked to your neighbor, or yeah. whatever that the neighbor of that house. Mm -hmm. uh, he was so fucking chill. Yeah. Because I, I had such a sinking, because you were like, oh, we got to go talk to him. And I was like, oh, dad, no. <laughs> like, come on, no. And we walked over, and I was like kicking the dirt and staring at my feet. And he was like, did you guys break that light? Like, yeah. I was like, thank you. God. Yeah, that's right. He's fucking like, hate that light, yeah. dude. You br I'm glad you broke it. And we were just like, huh? Huh? <laughs> what? What? 
This is real, the true, actually. Yes, Everybody looking at this reaction. is true. Yeah. He was like standing there with a broom, sweeping up glass, looking and being like, I'm so glad that you broke that light. That's the ugliest light. I've been wanting to get rid of it for so long and I just could I wouldn't do it. Put, and you brought now I have to replace it. Thank you so much. It's and like, we were just like, what the fuck? Like, Bob, in it's videos like that, it, ever. in a games, like somehow that always works out for you. You you I fail know. so successfully <laughs> every time, and I don't get it. <laughs> I know. I so I've been I'm way behind. I've been posting our previous forest gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How 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 did I fall down I the enormous don't. pit onto the one of the limited number of ledges that has a path that just I walked out by of, pure guess, <laughs> by absolute <laughs> random chance? I didn't. I don't know anything about that game. I still don't. I just walked out, and while you guys were up top dying and suffering, I just wandered out. I was like. I'm back. Hey. You almost had a full wipe there. I was within, I think, because was it me? Yeah, it was Mark that went I don't know after, right? how I was within you one got me smack. up. It was, yeah, and I, I was one second away from, like, caving in there. <laughs> yeah, just, like, and the incredible. funny thing was, like, the, the, the people, I almost died. I was so close to dead when I killed the last one, and then I got to you, what, the last second? And then, Bob, didn't you just find a way up? You were just yeah, like, Yeah, hey, I, I literally was stuck on the, I went back, I went down and died. I jumped back down, got my stuff, and just found a cave on the side, halfway up the side of this huge pit, and just wandered out. It's That's it, like, literally, that is my life. That just happens sometimes. You it's are, nonsense. you are, uh, there's this SCP called SCP-6666-J, and it's about this Dr. Gerald, who is never allowed to drive any sort of vehicle, uh, because as soon as he's behind the wheel, some cataclysmically bad thing <laughs> happens, and he survives. <laughs> he's, he's driven a car and exploded a whole town, demolished a building, <laughs> devastated a countryside, like, ran a lawnmower into space. Like, he, it's just like, he cannot get behind a car. He will never be allowed. And it's so funny, because you... Everything you touch turns to chaos. Why did uh -huh. you destroy my gazebo? Why Listen, did you destroy my gazebo? I thought gazebo? I was doing something really cool. You're I don't gonna know, put a man. hole in my know. gazebo. The Listen. gazebo was so fucked. I had just got up there to look at it, and I thought for sure I'd somehow <laughs> fucked it up. I, yeah, it was totally Wade, man. Yeah, it was Wade. Wade. I didn't do it. All of chat was like, "Wait, I can't believe you sabotaged them." Like everyone thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would I do it? I was just yeah, hanging well, out I'm in the gazebo. The one fucks up. It was so great that it wasn't me. Oh, I didn't God, make a mistake. Liberating. I knew that would happen. What are you talking yeah, about? Uh -huh, yeah, mm -hmm. I was testing Mark's resilience, and he failed. He was so sad. I don't, I don't remember the iPad reaction. I have to go back and watch that again. But no, oh, yeah. That was so pretty sad. equivalent sadness, feel. to be perfectly that honest. Was, that was very <laughs> I sad. I feel him being broken. Well, it's because I made that specifically for Bob, and I get it was his. <laughs> he could destroy it, but it was immediately after it was done. Like, well, I did, it was Bob, too. You were so nice about it. Like, I could yeah. Feel your yeah, pain. That's true. But you were just like, oh, if that's Wade had, okay. If Wade had just walked up and done that, you would have just been like, you asshole. <laughs> oh, you son of a, you ruined every, but I did it. And you were just like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, it's because oh. in the back of my mind, I'm like, ah, it's just Bob's nature, but oh, my God. <laughs> What, Bob's nature? It's right? in his nature. He can't help it. But, oh, come on. Bullshit. He can't help it. What? No, come on. Either he can't deserves help it, to be treated stuff. worse or I deserve to be treated better. And I'm not sure which one. I don't deserve none of that. I just, I just, do, I just do stuff, man. I don't know. I don't know how games work. What do you. Yeah, I yeah, watched that me. clip probably a million times from your perspective, Bob. I think Cat re uh, tweeted it out. I was watching yeah. it. It's pretty good. I, just, I kept watching it on repeat. Just your face as you're falling, like this, the, the, the moment from like the oopsies to the laughing, I just, mm, gold. <laughs> it was a long, look, Mark, it was a relatively long oopsie. By my, even by my own standards, that was big oops, okay? It's okay, I forgive that was a, you. That was super oopsies. I forgive you. That doesn't sound honest. That I forgive you, it's just, it is honest. I honestly okay. forgive you, I forgive okay. you. Do you forgive me for all the shit I've pulled over there? Of course I do. Because <laughs> the only moment I could think of that I probably hurt you as much was whenever we did um, 
human fall flat and I reset the raft when you and Bob were close to getting through there. That was pretty bad. I don't we also you. ended uh, the stream shortly after that, just like uh, we did with the forest. I don't know if I forgive you for that one. That wasn't like, ha ha, oopsie. It was that was me. mean. That was not an accident. <laughs> you knew exactly it, it what you were doing, of, and you chose an accident. to do it. Well, you, you guys prefaced didn't it. accidentally leave we me were, behind. We either, were going so. and doing it, and you were like, what if I reset it right now? And we were like, don't, man, come on. And you were just like, I'm going to reset it now. And then you did it on purpose. That was not the same as an oops. And you waited until we were close to the top maliciously. No. Yeah. That, that was an accident. I couldn't see from where I see, was. See, Wade's poor treatment is justified. Yeah. In this case, in this scenario. That's indicative of all of his behavior. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like it was just me lashing out after all the mistreatment I've received. So it was over malicious. Years. You lashed uh, out. Yeah, you no, it, 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 you it, it. It, it was below it. below consciousness, subconscious. That's, That's the, the word. Was, there you go. It was subterranean conscious mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. of my liquidacious thinking. You know, liquidacious thinking. Liquidacious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my liquidacious thinking. You're, you're you know, my financial checked. advisor has been telling me I need to be a little more <laughs> liquidacious. <laughs> Yeah. You don't want your funds too rockinated. That's what he keeps saying. No. <laughs> yeah. Rockinated money, don't spend. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing some like those George Bushisms right now with liquidation. <laughs> <things. laughs> that actually kind of is a. Yeah. <laughs> My thinking is very liquidacious. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna sign this relief package. We need to make sure the banks stay nice and liquidacious. <laughs> we don't want the American automakers to go out of business now. <laughs> We're going to liquidate them. We're going to liquidate the banks. Liqui liquidate everybody. Liquidacious. Man, I miss him. What's that? Well, I miss his, his talking, at least. <laughs> I miss Will Ferrell as yeah, oh, yeah, the Will Ferrell on skits were really good. He was, you know who's bad at being a president on SNL? Fucking Jim Carrey. You guys, oh, you guys yeah. Biden. Yeah. Jim Carrey is the guy they currently have doing Biden. He's terrible. Yeah. And I'm a is big he? Jim Carrey fan. No, I love most of his I, movies. I, really I think he's hilarious. I, I did see he's that. He's fucking terrible, yeah. Joe Biden. I, I love Jim Carrey to death, but yeah, his it wasn't very good. No, it was bad. <laughs> and like he has said, he's not. I think he has said he's not going to be doing that long term. Or maybe someone at SNL did. Like they're going to figure something else out. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Since Biden is is gonna be inaugurated and whatever, mm -hmm, yeah. but like, oh man, well, that's just that's bad. It's bad, and Biden's so easy to make fun of. Like, <laughs> like, like, come on, he's, it's not like he's like I I appreciate that. It, it, however you feel politically, Obama as like a public speaker and as a personality, mm -hmm, yeah. not a lot to like pick at necessarily. I feel yeah. like Key and Peel did an excellent job with Luther, the anger translator, yeah, in yeah, yeah. picking up on something about Obama that was like a fault or whatever, mm. something he didn't do very well. Yeah. Well, otherwise, like very well spoken, very reserved, very careful, and you know he didn't mm. really say like dumb shit very often. Mm. But Biden does a terrible job <laughs> of being, yeah. you know, careful about what he says, speaking intelligently. He's, you know. He's not a hard person to make a hilarious caricature of, I feel He's like. He's like that uncle or great uncle. You get like, le like someone walks out of the room. It's just you two in the room and he starts talking. You're like, oh, I need an excuse to go, but I'll listen, I guess. <laughs> you know, I I've told you guys that I met Joe Biden, right? No. I love him. He's great. He no, uh, no, I, is... I, like I've met him and exactly <laughs> what you're describing is exactly how he is. I was, I was with a bunch of YouTubers that were invited to the White House. Um, and so we were supposed to meet Obama. We were, and I was looking very much forward to that. But he was busy being the president or whatever. I don't know. Like, Lame. and so, so Obama, if you're watching right now, shame on you. So <laughs> Biden stepped up to the plate, and uh, it, it, like, it's just, 
he walks in the room and he's got Thanks, that Obama. he's got that big smile on his face and he just starts telling stories like <laughs> she, it's just like here literally when they say grandpa joe like that it, literally what it felt like he just walked like hey how you doing oh, all right i can't do an impression of him but whatever <laughs> that's like, great no Please no continue. stick with that one i like that uh, i like that better than jim carrey's uh, biden I, i'm joe biden uh, anyway so he he literally like he sits down he's like right, what do y'all do he start asking a few questions then just starts going on stories and just like literally was just listening to him tell stories and they were good stories don't get me wrong i can't remember what they were but they were good stories but that was it like he just he, he just he, he he talks a lot he talks a lot yeah. I have a really a bad feeling it's going to be me in a few years. I will literally be that person. It's like, oh, God, don't lock me in a room with him and I'll just be talking for hours incoherently. I could see that. I, already, I could see I you telling long, do it. long stories about whatever when, when yeah. you're just like meeting people. I know I'm going to suck as I get older. I'm going to suck so much. <laughs> 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 I might as well bite another airhead now and just end it all. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing is pre self-loathing. You're fine with who you are right now, but you know who you're going to be. And you I'm hate okay that dude. with who I am right now, but it's only going to get worse. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, I've, I've not seen much of Jim Carrey's portrayal of Biden. I thought a lot of people liked it, but maybe, maybe not. Don't. don't it's bad. No. I it's think lame. people were just hyped up at the m moment of it happening. I, I don't know. It's it's not a good impression. But. Well, it's who especially did Biden harsh. Whenever he was vice president. Um. One of the yeah. older cast members did Biden once or twice. Okay. Um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. I'm terrible. But anyway, anyway, you know, you know who is an excellent uh, politician uh, parody person on SNL and makes Jim Carrey's Biden even worse is uh, the Mamala Harris. Who is that? My Rudolph came back to yeah, do Kamala yeah, Harris. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she fucking slays Kamala Harris. She <laughs> is so funny. I didn't see that. <laughs> I, I that, would love to because that, that does make a lot of sense. After, after the election week in that episode, they had Kamala and Joe doing like you know post-election speeches and that sort of stuff. She is so funny. She mm. kills it. Yeah. I hope she watch. continues to do Kamala Harris because that's I enjoyed keeper. the lady that portrayed um Hillary and I like Kristen Wiig a lot. I can't think of the other, what's the girl's name that did Hillary. Um Oh um, I, I don't follow SNL, so is I don't that know. Is that Tina Fey that did Hillary Clinton? No, uh no, Amy, she did Sarah Payne. No, it, yeah, yeah, what's uh oof. Amy Poehler? No. No, no. no. I can I oh, picture oh. her face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Kate McKinnon. Yeah, Kate that's McKinnon. it. Yeah. yeah, I think she's fantastic. She yeah. was fantastic mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. She did um did you see the the i think it's called kelly wise the skit where she was um she was like pennywise the clown but she was supposed to be like kellyanne conway and she was like hiding in a sewer trying to get uh what's it, cooper anderson is that the guy's name anderson cooper anderson cooper you know when, they're both first names i don't know um that was a really good skit because she like did multiple characters in that and she did like nailed all of them perfectly she's very very talented yeah she's funny yeah yeah Oh, people are pointing out Larry, Larry, uh, Larry David as uh, Bernie. Oh, he was awesome. Yeah, and, 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 then, that one and then they I figured out they the were actually re they were well, they were related. They're like cousins oh, or something. They? <laughs> They're like okay. cousins. They, they figured that yeah. out after the factor. I, I don't know. They, they... He he did a great Bernie Sanders. <laughs> he kind of just is Bernie Sanders. Yeah, <laughs> but funnier. But yeah. yeah, the name sounds the name sounds so familiar. But I can't. I gotta look him up. Okay, right. now that we're talking about political memes, did you guys see? Uh, so Ber have you seen the birdie meme that is Bernie of uh, <laughs> I am once again asking you to I, donate to my I campaign love or that whatever meme so that, much did you see he did that on the floor of Congress did he <laughs> I forget what it was some issue and he brought he got he had like a big sign it was some issue that was like publicized and he on the floor he was like I am once again asking you. <laughs> <laughs> to listen to me and he was tied to he just like used that. that he totally said the meme and i don't know if he was memeing on purpose or if he just says that a lot but it was really great i mean in the situation yeah i'm sure it made sense but god i hope so i hope he, he like i hope he's getting into memes because that that, <laughs> that meme is so versatile like, it, it has legs <laughs> god i i hope so usually shit like that is cringe but if oh my god i hope so that would be amazing I think uh, memeing Bernie would be the only way that Bernie could possibly get cooler and more hilarious as a politician. <laughs> Do you think Bernie will play um, Among Us the people like AOC did? <laughs> no, <laughs> Bernie just, and Among Us! 
Just God, uh, his gonna character ask you to not vote for red. <laughs> it's like proximity among us, and just it Bernie's character Truth, in the corner. I he's swear like, it. how do I do the trash? <laughs> how do I get to where the trash? I got the files downloaded. Where do I put them in? <laughs> like Bernie, you gotta go. Follow me. Like, how do I move? Like, did uh, you switch? Did you switch it to WASD controls? What's that? <laughs> oh my god. I would I, love to watch Bernie stream god, games. It would be so funny. I think I think uh, AOC said something like he'd be too much of an angry grandpa to do that. <laughs> I think I remember her like <laughs> tweeting that out. So. <laughs> I admittedly didn't watch much of the stream whenever she was I, doing it, but I, I, I was it curious. Yeah. How that went. But yeah, there's certain people who just love to watch <laughs> fucking play yeah, God, if I, if I could pick like people that put yeah, in yeah, yeah. Big Brother who, who style you... like into these rounds, like oh man, Bernie would be up there. <laughs> God, <laughs> Bernie, Jeff Bezos. Uh, let's put Bill Gates in there. I want Elon Musk in there just just to see how he would use his big brain to solve all these things. His enormous um, <laughs> smart person brain. His wrinkly, so wrinkled. His brain, incredibly wrinkled. Um, and. Cobb. <laughs> His brain's in your car, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's on all of ours. Did I am a little surprised they brain? didn't make the voice for the Tesla Google Assistant Elon. <laughs> like, I would kind of hate that, but also that'd be kind of right. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> I can't even imagine what his voice is in my head right now. The only time I think I've ever heard him actually speak was his cameo in Iron Man 2. Which I still don't... My my brain has shut that out. He is, he is not in that movie, <laughs> according to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's just such a cinematic classic. It, right? You refuse to acknowledge that Elon Musk was a part of it. I'm acknowledging um, that you're saying it. It's just my brain's reality is very different. Like, it's completely off. I mean, Elon Musk. Sorry, I said it wrong. Yeah, that's right. Good yeah, that, no one corrected me for so long, and I feel so... That's one of those embarrassisms. Another Bushism. Embarrassisms. <laughs> yeah. One of them embarrassisms <laughs> from my past. You're just gonna morph <laughs> into George One of the George biggest embarrassisms w. of my life. <laughs> I've never my been so Americans. embarrassed. I've been very embarrassed Lockbox. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elon was in uh, in Iron Man too. Uh, There's a scene right before they go down to the racetrack where now, now I've got Tony George George W. Bush in Iron Man too. That's who's there in my <laughs> right now. <laughs> I appreciate what he did with the. We're gonna find Thanos, and when we do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see George W. Bush in Elon's position in real life. We're gonna build us an Iron a, Man suit on a SpaceX podium, just like. <laughs> We're going to Mars. <laughs> We're going you know to capitalize I mean. on our investment. Uh, that's the same. You got to come up with new forms. You can't embar embarrassism, capitalize. You could do better than that. Come, yeah, come on, on, George. Man. Yeah, I really can't. <laughs> Here goes my self confidence. Thanks, guys. Come, come on, <laughs> man. I thought it was I was just trying to feel the flow. <laughs> Get it right the first time. It's just starting to feel the flow, and you dammed up my river. Oh god. Okay. Um, what were we talking about before this? Um, I SNL, I somehow got us onto uh, SNL political uh, parody oh people. So we were talking about Jim Carrey. I don't remember. About? There was a there was a three thread that we were talking about before. It went, there was I mean, music we and there was something else. About the Adam Savage quote that Wade had brought up and it like way doing before. stuff. I'm talking like it was between music and uh, political memes. What? It was a small. It was a moment. It was a tiny nugget. Confidence. Confidence. Stuff. Uh, creativity. Oh. Creativity. I don't know what that is. Creativity. Right. Okay. Conclusive. Gone. Conclusive. Gone again. Got damned it. up. Okay. That's right. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Anyway, being creative is hard. Yes, it is. But like most things with practice, Actually, maybe creativity isn't the thing that you can practice because I, I'm a firm believer that creativity is purely unconscious. Like your your subconscious is always shooting out signals, and they come out, and they'll they'll just inspire you, and they you won't even know why it came up, but it happened. And I and I think that creativity is in all of us, and ideas are in all of us. It's just about finding what works and what's 
quote unquote good or what you think is good according to your tastes? Well, yeah, there's definitely a strong, it's a strong combination of learning how to be receptive to your own thoughts. Like at least the way that I approach it when I, when I attempt to creativity is about not, not shutting things down, mm -hmm. not judging anything, seeing whatever you think of how, mm -hmm. whatever you connect, being receptive to that, and then trying to figure out what how you can use that inspiration to make whatever you're trying to make or to improve whatever you're trying to work on and like people you know like you're saying wade it's really easy and it's something i do a lot too it's really easy to shut down to hear yourself have an idea make a connection and immediately just be like oh that's stupid mm. like that's the thing that, you, that we practice in improv too like that's the entire thing about improv is you don't judge anything yeah. Accept whatever you're thinking, be open to it, be receptive to it, and then use it. Yeah. And that's hard. That's a hard skill. But yeah. the other I feel like the other side of creativity, which is you kind of talked about this way as well, is the technical thing of you then have to master your techniques, mm, whatever yeah. your craft is. You mm. have to be good enough yeah. to at least attempt whatever you're thinking of. Like there's a lot of stuff that I love. Like I've been getting really into woodworking lately. By which I mean, purely, I've been watching a lot of videos where other people are doing woodworking and thinking to myself like, ooh, that's really cool. I wonder like that might combine with this other type of like joinery that I saw or like, what if I made a box, but I used this, these, you know, this technique that they're doing here with the, with the way they're, they're shaping it or they're joining the corners or whatever. Like I have all these thoughts. I've, I've literally never screwed two pieces of wood together. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm so far away technically, even though I can look at this and be very inspired and think like, Ooh, I want to make like a, I want to make a couch or I want to make a table, a little side table. I have all these ideas. You need both. You need both yeah. the technical, some amount of technical ability to do something with what you're inspired by, but you also need the, Oh, you know, you need to learn that skill of, Oh, being open and not judging whatever your thought process is. And then, you know, being comfortable. Some ideas are bad. Some ideas are good. It's all inspiration that you just need to channel into actually creating whatever you're trying to create. Mm -hmm. it's, so it's, it's there's, there's those two sides to it, at least has how I see it. Yeah, I think it's overwhelming sometimes when you think about like, like video production, for example. I remember when I was editing my own stuff and I would have these ideas like, oh, I would really like to do this. And then not having that knowledge foundation, not being like big brain enough to know, like, how do I even begin to tackle this? You know, mm -hmm. you'd look up like a YouTube tutorial or something like, oh, okay. But like these ideas I would have were like really grand. I was like, oh, this is probably a good idea. But I never took the time to learn how to do it because in the moment I was like, well, it's just for this one little thing. So I'm just not going to waste my time on that. I'd rather just get the video out because I got this and this to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like. I think that's how it started was I would like ex find excuses like, eh, I just want to get the video out today so I can have a video today. And I guess I'll just not do that. Whereas if I'd taken the time way back when I first started editing to learn how to improve and become a better editor, I probably would have continued learning, but I kind of always stifled myself with some excuse of like, eh, take too long or eh, I'm probably not going to be good enough at it anyway. I mean, there'd always be some excuse I would have for not doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is about me in terms of that kind of stuff because with with editing and youtube in general like it was never something that i even questioned at any moment it was like oh i have to do this uh, i have to edit this uh, i gotta make this it's like it was always one yeah. of those things where i was like i have to there was no other option i mean physically there wasn't because i didn't have an editor but there also wasn't any other option in my brain being like well i gotta so here i go and, and with a lot of things i think that's just like how i approach learning things because everyone's been in a situation where you who's not an artist who looks at a piece of paper you can imagine what you would like to draw and then you try and it's a stick figure and it's horrible and it's horribly yeah. deformed and that's like what bob is talking about the technique um uh, but with me it's like whenever i whenever i make things like and try to learn something i'm i like i know i'm terrible at it or maybe i subconsciously know i'm terrible at it but it never gets acknowledged really it's never a limiting factor uh and it can it can cause me to like take a lot longer to make things because I just have to plow on and figure things out. But I feel like it lets me reach a higher level of mastery when I get there. It's just like it's this weird thing where I, I feel compulsion to uh, figure it out for myself. Um, 
and and I don't like people telling me how. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I really don't like backseat gaming or anything like that. Is because it's part of my personality. I just I don't like people telling me how. I want to figure it out, and that's always how it's been for me. So, I I think with creative endeavors, it's it's got to be something like you 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 feel that want and you feel that drive to be to be good at, and you're like, oh, man, I I want to get there only i see it ha okay i gotta find the path and the path is winding and weird but yeah i don't know so I this think is though, random oh, go ahead but we were ta i talked about TikTok, and this popped into my head and, uh, and i like that this is kind of a recurring bit almost now so i've i'm glad you guys liked geo wizard checked out geo wizard oh yeah i actually uh, haven't seen many of his videos yet i gotta go back you should definitely check out the Ooh, yeah, the yeah. straight line yeah. crossing videos yep. uh on tiktok there's an account it's not groundbreaking and i'm sure that you could find this content elsewhere but i had just never seen it before there's an account called real foley sounds i think oh, well, maybe i should look it's basically it's an account that's owned and operated by this woman who's a professional Foley artist, mm. which if you don't know, is the art of making sounds for like movies and stuff. Yeah. So real Foley sound, R-E-E-L Foley sound. Yeah, I'm seeing it now. Um, they have a ton of followers and like a bunch of likes. The, they, it's just a bunch of minute long TikToks of this woman and her coworkers making sounds. They like, you watch a monitor, you watch the action on screen, and then you use whatever water, wood, dirt, items, chains, locks, anything to make the sound that then will be used in the sound design for the movie. It's so funny mm -hmm. just to watch this lady, especially the ones where they, she shows you what, shout, what sound she's imitating, yeah. to watch what ultimately they use to make the sounds. Foley is, must just be like the most fun job in the entire world. Yeah. Uh, because it's entirely just fucking around and you you get a scene and it's like all right this guy walks down a gravel road opens a lock on a jangly chain locked fence and then slides the fence open and you're like all right how do i make all these sounds oh what I, am i what am i banging together i what have I seen this video because i see the big concrete water tub thing yeah yeah the water tub i, is I have big scrolled videos. across that one yeah i as a guy that loves sound, like that, I'm also weird in the editing world because apparently, and I've asked other like editors and stuff like this, I love doing the sound design. That's mm. my favorite part about it. I love it. It's it's what I love the most because you guys heard me spiel about music, but sound design I love. And if I had, like. I mean, I could. I was about to say, if I had money to do it, and I'm like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had the time, okay. So you're going to do this because you can. I Wait, would you have build some money buy time. I would build. I would build an incredible Foley studio. It was just stuff like that. Because like I, I had an experimentation with music and stuff, and like performative music, and I realized like I didn't really like that. Um, like I did on on tour, like I, I did singing, and I it's like it was a nice challenge and it was good to try, but I also found I didn't like it. What I do like is scoring and sound design. So maybe I should pick up music again, but try to make, you know, soundtracks and and, and sound effects and stuff like that. And maybe that would be more enjoyable for me because I inherently do like sound. I don't like listening to pop music or any type of genre music, but I do enjoy listening to soundtracks and stuff like that and ambiance and just sounds in general I love. So yeah, maybe if I if I have time one day, maybe I'll do that. Time one day just build a sound studio? Maybe. Maybe someday. I mean, it's not honestly, you don't need that much for it. No. You go to Goodwill. <laughs> you just need a quiet room <laughs> and a decent mic and some random shit. Like yeah. you could oh, the stuff that Foley good. people use to make specific sounds is so funny. Mm-hmm. Good, Wasn't like um, one stuff. of the Star Wars blasters or was it a blaster lightsaber something involved like just like something with a power line or something? Oh, yeah. No, they threw a wrench or something at a power line. And it made, that a, made like the blaster <laughs> sound effect yeah, or something, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, yeah, it's, like, it's like I love exploring different sounds and I, and I love like trying different things and getting it all around. Uh, someone said that they love the crispy, perfect sound. It's like, I don't really like the crispy, perfect sound. I like sound that's gritty and weird and kind of off and like I, I i like this stuff that it, it feels almost wrong in a way but you put it in a situation you're like well it's, somehow it works you know i, li I like that kind of stuff i i like uh i like making a lot out of a little you know it's uh ah. there's, there's so many things that are 
totally never going to be appreciated that can go into sound design and stuff like that. But that I, I love the nuance of it. Yeah. I do not listen to Ed Sheeran. I did a cover of Ed Sheeran. I do not. <laughs> Everyone's. I'm I've had this sure recently. It popped up. It popped up a lot. People were like, "Oh, your favorite musician's Ed Sheeran." It's like, what? What the fuck? No. Yeah. No. I mean, it's guys, fine. Mark but fucking loves Ed I, Sheeran. Yeah, yeah, um, when we were on tour, you. he played a couple of Ed Sheeran songs for his uh, acoustic set. Yeah. But when we were off stage. It was just it, it's, full blast on I, his AirPod <laughs> Maxes backstage. Ed Sheeran just everywhere. He would walk around just like, when your legs don't work like they used to before. <laughs> Constantly. Singing out loud, even though <laughs> friends are practicing. <laughs> he yeah, would just, yeah. just walk around like, wait in his boxers. Why don't you close the door when you're changing? <laughs> Just saying what's uh, happening, you know, all you, to the right. themes of Ed Sheeran. I can't deny it. You guys, you guys are right. So we what were happened? All working That's really hard on our craft, but yeah, Mark was just yeah. listening to Ed Sheeran walk on the craft. man on the tour. It's just, our yeah, craft. It was just Bob our and craft. Wade in a room. Zip, zap, zap, zip, zap, zap, zip, zap, zap, zip, zap. Hey, big boo! Oh yeah, big boo! <laughs> just a duo. Just, just, just see how fast you could do it. <laughs> not not what we're doing or saying at all. Just like how fast. Like, all right, see three lines. Like, hey, I want some ice cream. Oh, you want some ice cream? Oh, I want chocolate ice cream. Oh, how good. <laughs> like, next scene. <laughs> as fast as possible. Get out on stage and just scream improv at the audience. <laughs> Yeah, that's why the tour was so good. Yeah. Not because of Mark's hard work, because Wade and I really sped up our improv. Yeah, just full speed ahead. We put that in like fucking Mach two. I will yeah, say, I remember it, it, we had it over three hundred IPM there for a minute. <laughs> There's a moment where we bonded over the Ed Sheeran song, and I mean this sincerely. There was a moment we were backstage, and we were singing that song, but we were doing it in a way. We, it was about pants. Oh yeah, and you I told me still, about this. Ever. I still find myself humming our version all the time, where I'm like, "No pants, I've got no pants. Where are my pants?" And then like we'd have like we, we, I don't know, we like all went in on it. We were like singing it together. It started off like each one of us would like sing like a line, and yeah. then we'd like come together for the chorus about the pants. And I like I find myself I don't remember all of it, but I find myself just like, "No pants, I've got no pants," <laughs> and for no reason. But like that was a really special, stupid moment that like I'm just like, yeah, that was that, that was with the time. <laughs> you guys ever you guys ever pull up that uh, that a wall nation song and just play it and close your eyes and just remember the sensation? What's no, I I haven't actually. I didn't remember the name of the. I didn't know it was a. Oh, the yeah, the the, right. oh, the intro song. <laughs> I'd have to start with the song that came before. What was the song that came before it? It was like a live recording of um, We Could Be Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. It had the fake it ending and then the drum fill. Yeah. And then just the, the jam out on the chorus. Heroes. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's a perfect example of the counterpoint to refining your creativity is that sometimes it doesn't matter what you choose because we, I didn't choose. I, who chose the music for like the that tour? Specifics, that specifics, no that Nation song, when we were in Tulsa, we were doing, you were, we filmed the animation, the end of it in the yeah, parking yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. And you were sort of talking about it. And Swanee was like, hey, do you have like a song for that? Like an intro song or whatever? And you were like, nah, I don't know, I'll pick one for the animation. And he was like, I got this song. It's an AWOL Nation song. And he uh, like put it on the uh, speakers. Hollow Moon, actually. In yeah, he put it on the speakers in the in the theater where we were rehearsing, and we all just sort of stood around the stage and listened mm -hmm. to it. And I, I, if I read the room correctly, I remember it, it finished, and we were all kind of like, "I don't know, man." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's our song. But Swanee was like, was nah, this the, is the one. I thought one. it was before the theater. I thought we listened to it when we were practicing in L.A. I have no idea, man. I just have, I, maybe I'm I wrong. Think it, no, really I think it was theater. theater. I, think it was, I think it was in that practice theater that we had there. But, but it was connected to, because we filmed the end of the animation in Tulsa, right? In yes. the parking lot of the casino. That's true, yes, yeah, we, we did. did. And yeah. that was, so Mark was editing that together for the show. And so I think that was when Mark added the music. Yeah, but I'm not sure. That might be. It's hard to yeah. yeah. It might but yeah. Swan, that was Swanee's song. He had that and he just like recommended it. And it, it's just one of those things where at the time, you know, you're not sure, but it be it becomes the right thing in time yeah. because you just 
it, yeah. it, it, it associates with it and it sounds perfect afterward and you're like it would it would be terrible if it was different if it was anything yeah. else it would not be the same and yet if somehow <laughs> there was a different song there like eh, i guess that would be it i guess i guess i, I hear the have. ending of we could be heroes and like i get like the goosebumps and, like <laughs> i, I want to like jump up and down like all right here we go and then like then that song kicks on and it's like uh what was it bob was it always you and ethan was it ethan yeah was on the it, table? It, when it got sing. the when it got to the bridge, or maybe it was the core, when it got to a little section, boy, Ethan and I boy. would lock eyes and go, ooh, I'm a little bad boy, little bad boy, little yeah, bad boy. Because right. we were, the, us three were on the same side. I think Mark and Tyler came yeah, out we the on the same side. side. So it was always, I would always watch you and Ethan do like the little bad boy. And like every show, we did like what, 50 or 60 shows. Every show, the amount of like animation you and Ethan had generally escalated to like, or it started off just like kind of humming it. And then like by the end, you'd be like leaning in like little bad boy and like sit back, little bad boy. It yep. just got more and more animated, more into it. It's the, it's the yeah. hype song. All right, well, I'll have to play it now. What'd you say? It's called Hollow Moon, right? Hollow Mark? Moon, a Bad Wolf By or something A-Wall like Nation. that. Yeah. <laughs> Are we allowed to play it? Well, we're... I oh. am. I was going to say, I'm not allowed to play it. Hollow Moon, A-Wall Nation, air. Yeah, for those who don't know what we're talking about, we went on a tour about two years ago now. Three? We did two? I mean, we did three. We did five tours, didn't we? Five different uh, three test practice, leg east west, east coast Europe, west coast Australia. Europe Australia Australia mm -hmm. the test leg was two shows it was four three shows four 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 oh my Australia god it was, was. Six. well it was New Zealand two in Australia. Texas and then and then oh, Louisville practice. and then Akron a double in we did, Akron we did uh, five we did shows Dallas, technically Houston. oh and Detroit oh we did Detroit. we did two shows in Detroit and two shows in Indy huh. right Indy okay right. Yeah, because Indy's the one that my family came to. Yeah. I think Mark's, I think a lot of our friends mm -hmm. and family came yeah. to the Indy one. I was just, it was, it was really cool. And at the end of it, you know, we, we could definitely say we got a lot better at improv than in the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah, like, I think uh, I think confidence was a big part of it, too, because we actually, like, our training was more fresh in our mind for the practice one, but our show was not, because we were still figuring out what the hell the show was. And the show... Even though we only did five tours, it was technically the same show throughout. It actually evolved a lot from the practice one. We changed a lot of stuff along the way. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. The Australia well, leg was the strongest. It was. Hit. I thought it was really funny. We got to Australia and we didn't really do any rehearsal or anything before that because we had done it so much. And we got there and like Mark had thought about it, and the rest of us just assumed it'd be the same. And Mark was like, "No, no, fuck all that." No, oh, no, and we were like, all right, and we just did a bunch of different, completely different shit in Australia. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's that is me to a T. Uh, <laughs> just like, ah, I didn't like these things about it. Let's change it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I will say like we got really good at it afterwards and, and I'll say with the confidence thing like it's funny how confidence escalates linearly with skill. We, we were, I will say this, not very good at improv in what? the beginning. No. Our five days of training more than <laughs> honestly with the little time she had Rachel did a great job. I made uh, Rachel laugh one you whole did. time. Yeah. You're the only Come on. person who did. I'm pretty sure we killed it. <laughs> She laughed once during that entire week, and it wasn't awkward at all. She was yeah. so much scarier than any live audience to perform in front of, because we, like, every time she came in, everything, she was like, well, you could have done this, and we're like, that's funny! Why aren't we funny? Because <laughs> 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 we tried different skits, and we're always like, oh, God, she didn't laugh, and then Bob, you made her laugh, like, one time, and we're like, I made her God. laugh by failing so spectacularly <laughs> that she thought it was hilarious that that was what had happened. Because <laughs> if I remember right, the interaction that made her laugh was, um, we were doing scene in three lines, but we were doing it in like a rotating fashion. So yeah. it was supposed to be kind of rapid fire. And I was on the receiving side. So I was not supposed to talk first. <laughs> and when it was like, go, all right, go. And then it was like my turn. And I hopped up and I was like, hey, how are you doing, Jeff? That's not, it's not my turn to talk. You talk now or some dumb <laughs> yeah, shit. And she was just that. so shocked at what I had come out with that she just laughed. Oh my God. I and can it was picture funny, it. funny, but not on purpose. I remember that exact moment. I do too, actually. Now hey, how you doing? That's nah, not my turn. Are you talking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if that counts as making her laugh. I think she just laughed at me because I was such oh an unbelievable God. fuck up. Jesus Christ, I remember uh, that. I think it was Tyler was up against you and he just broke completely. <laughs> God. 
Yeah, yeah well, Tyler's saying he thinks it was a no but. Oh, no. No, he was wrong. He's a, he's, he's a popped up in the chat and was talking about it. <laughs> we did have a no but that was really funny. I don't know if Rachel laughed, but I remember we did a scene. I don't know who no butted, but one of us I no butted do that so so hard. swiftly. Yeah, <laughs> I I mean I still do, but early in those early days, especially I used to just because that's like that's like my kind of humor in person mm -hmm. yeah. is to just yeah. be like no fuck you, yeah. but that doesn't work in that context. <laughs> the thing that was funny whenever you would mess up like that, Bob, is like just like what you did with the oh it's your turn to talk now I'm gonna shut up like the way you like recover just by like continuing to ramble in a really I don't know it's so fucking funny when you do something and then like you go off on your like your somewhat uncomfortable ramble I, it seems it's, like you're kind of uncomfortable it's, during it's it but a, that it's is a very so self-aware sort of disappointment in myself yeah but it's so your reaction to it is so goddamn funny mm -hmm. like i every time that happens i laugh it doesn't matter what it is like it could be something completely detrimental to what we're doing but whenever you like oh no 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 oof, ah, i was my i should have talked oh yeah you don't know like every time you do that it fucking breaks me <sighs> every time it's a skill. You have to learn how to fail it's correctly. I don't have the confidence it's, or the it's talent. Failing to do with that. success. That's what he does every yeah. time. It's beautiful. I feel like that's what I've learned about myself today. Yeah. A lot of my success is actually just learning how to embrace my failures and not giving up until I force everyone to acknowledge some level of success out of disaster. Your I biggest mean, successes are the ones that always broke the camera or no one ever was able to see. Like you're uh you're your those weren't successes. Like my the shoes are off. My feet are right. off. Those oh, were actual Lord. anger. Those weren't. <laughs> those weren't successful comedy. Those were sincere it emotion. Was, but it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, well, they're funny because they're shocking because of who I am. But that's not. That doesn't count as making good comedy. That's just me feeling how I felt and expressing it loudly. But so loudly good. that it, it reverberated it means, through comedy space time. It means that your truth is great. What's in <laughs> here? What's in your core is what really matters. And that's beautiful. Not many people discover that about themselves. Not many people have value in their core. Most people are empty garbage. That is also yeah, true. I'm right here. Just call me out. No. Dude, most people. It's not most just people. you. No. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm including everyone here. I'm inclusive. <laughs> what percentage of chat would you say is empty? Solid hushed? 80 to 90%. I was going to say well, the yeah. Us, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Doesn't bode well for him. It doesn't bode well at all. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I miss, I'm nostalgic for Tor. Those were awful in some ways, but great in so many more ways. And that's the beauty of trying things that you're not sure about. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, like the, the perseverance through it, it makes it makes it special. It makes it good and it makes it fun to remember. Like I, I look back on times like that and uh, you know, those are those are what's really meaningful. That's why I always try to do things that are inherently uncomfortable. Cause some of the fucking moments people never got to see. And like there were a couple of skits that we didn't do on stage. I wish people got to see like Butterman and I'm not gonna go into the details, but Cracker Barrel <laughs> still makes me laugh really hard. That's um, not right. Um, what? But the moment with the 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 fucking bus, the day that the bus broke down, and this, which was the same night that we got pulled over, and our fucking bus driver pretended he didn't speak oh, English, that yeah. we got interrogated, I, and I was and not, never got I was not away for any of it. Was, was so surreal. It was yeah. that whole, crazy night. It was like a weird movie that we were. Yeah, in. that was a whole. <laughs> yeah, and Mark slept through the whole. Yeah, yeah the fucking dudes drag. like our bus driver just like oh, I don't know what you're saying, and the, the police like, came on and we're like everybody wake up, make everybody wake everyone up, come out out here and and nobody peeked in on mark <laughs> and mark didn't hear a thing and just <laughs> slept for well it must have been like 45 minutes when we had police on the bus and we yeah, were man. all dude we really slept around. like a like, baby why are there seat belts on this bus and we're like we don't fucking know dude we just rented it we didn't build the thing <laughs> why why aren't there seat belts ask him and he'd just be like oh no no english no english and i hadn't at the time, I was completely, like, everyone was obviously unaware that you weren't out there, I guess. We were all half asleep, and no one thought to touch, to come get you. Yeah. Just imagine if, like, that was happening, and then, like, you noticed, and you just come hopping out of the bunk, just like, hey, what the fuck's going on back here? Because Mark's really angry on tour. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Listen to his fucking edge. And, like, the police, the policeman, like, shoots you or tases you. I don't know. 
I don't even know if police have guns outside of America. Uh, anyway, back Shout to Evan. Out to Evan, though. Evan was such a lifesaver during all of our shows. Oh, Evan. Evan's the best. Evan Evan's still ass. a lifesaver. Yeah, still to this Evan day. Evan does all the things. Evan's incredible. I miss Evan. He hasn't gotten to save my life in a while. I miss that. Except That's when he weird. lies to me about when oh. this stream is starting later than it was going to, and then it's oh. not. And then I'm an asshole <laughs> because of Evan's incompetence. Well, Evan really took a turn here. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? There's one the incident, in, okay? Like, in Sweden or Norway or wherever we were for that one. But uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure he bribed the police officer to go away or something. <laughs> Like I don't, I have no idea what happened, but the resolution to that <laughs> is still the most wallet. random shit. Well, because like we were there, yeah, and the American guy was like, dollars. the the like Swedish police officer was like, why aren't there any seat belts on here? Whoa! And we were like, whoa, dude, calm down. We speak English, and he was, and like he did, he was just like, we were in trouble. Like we were apparently breaking the law, or the bus was, or something. I don't know. And then at some point he stepped outside and I swear to God, Evan stepped outside or maybe it was Carla or someone with the tour. They stepped outside. Our people came back inside. The police just walked away and let us go and nothing else happened. We and were, I don't like, know what the happened. Border leaving. Like we were trying to leave, I believe, whenever that happened too. Yeah. So they, I like to think it was just logic and cooler heads prevailing. No, I'm pretty maybe sure it was Evan a bribery bribed ring. them. I'm 100% sure I don't Evan want to say anything got on out stream. a huge sack of gold coins <laughs> and offered the police a few shekels to stop bothering us. Yeah. Some schmeckles. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know though. It's fascinating they to me up though. Some drugs and some cash. It was just like, please let us go. For those who don't know, Germany. It was Germany, right? Uh, I don't it think was so. Scandinavian it was, it was the, country. Was yeah, it, it was, on the it way from Oslo to Denmark? It was some country, some country up there. You cannot have buses or high capacity vehicles or any vehicles that doesn't have a seat belt. So there can't be for people, every passenger. For every that's passenger. On there. And yeah. they so must there be were like eleven of us on this bus. And so we needed that many seatbelts, yeah. Yeah, but tours happen in Europe all the time, and no tour bus has that kind of setup. It's sleeper buses for sleeping. Uh, so people just risk it every year. Hundreds of people must just drive their buses through these countries that the laws are there, and there must be some deal, wink, wink, that is set up, because otherwise... They're, like people wouldn't be doing it because if there was actually mm -hmm. a problem where it was going to be a fine or something like there would be something else but it's got to be like some code that evan knew that evan Ohio knows things no knows matter things. what it is evan knows it yeah evan i've knows. never i have no no i've had a variety of problems on tour and in in real life about other stuff when we're like together hanging out and making videos or whatever I have come to Evan with such a wide range of issues, and I can only imagine you have too, Mark. Mm -hmm. And just been like, Evan, do you do you know anything about this? Like, can you can you fix this? I think I'm in trouble here. I, I think I have an issue. And even if he has no clue, it just be like, I got you. And in like 40 minutes, he sends you a message back or comes and finds you, and is like, Hey, I totally resolved that thing. Here you go. <laughs> and you're just like, well, Okay, <laughs> sick. I don't know what you did, but that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to know. Some, yeah, some yeah. kind of wizard. I have no idea. No, nah, he's great. Love Evan. But that was the same night. Shortly thereafter, the other tour bus also broke down. I think we were entering Sweden because the other tour bus, I think, broke down. It wasn't that also the same night that the bridge was frozen. We almost yeah, didn't make so the we show. Were crossing like, all of the, that happened in one we night. We were crossing the peninsula, the Norway-Sweden peninsula, to Denmark. There's like a bridge that you can drive across that connects them. So yeah, the the in the middle of the night after the police incident, the other tour bus, which had like the crew on it, was another bus full of basically the same number of people. So it, suffice to say, more people than were supposed to be able to go on our bus. Um broke down completely and they're like freezing their ass off in the middle of Scandinavia in the winter. It's cold as shit mm -hmm. outside. So they, the other bus, every single human from that bus came onto our bus and it was literally like a, uh, like a high school sleepover in the back of our bus. And I felt terrible because like they had, the crew worked way harder than us in almost every way you can imagine the crew for the show Got the got into the venue before we did to set everything up, and we just you know kept, I don't know about Mark. Mark worked pretty hard too, but like for me, my experience on the tour was, I would casually stroll into the venue whenever I woke up, which was never very early. Stuff was set up, 
food was set up my dressing room was labeled and set up and there was water bottles of water and and all the tech stuff on the stage people were running around and, and communicating and setting and we would just wander in and they would be like all right sound check is at like 2 p.m 3 p.m and the show you know shows at 4 4 30 whatever uh and and we would just show up we'd show up to places and they would strap microphones on us we'd show up to other places and there, our wardrobe would be there the crew worked so hard and yeah, so all, this happened in the middle of the night and they were all exhausted it was a long day long shows and they're like oh fuck like some of them were sleeping on the floor some of them were piled yeah. on each other on couches in the back of the bus and i was like look i got a whole bed i've already slept a few hours like you guys need it and they're like no no you're the talent <laughs> you're the you have to perform and i was like come on guys like i know we all know what each other does like you know what i do <laughs> and i know what you do we all know who needs more sleep and they're like no 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 a crew member could never take the 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 bed of the royalty of the show <laughs> and like they like but would not no one would take my bed and i was like okay i guess i'm gonna go sleep in my own bed where it's warm with a pillow and blankets have yeah. fun sleeping on the floor for six hours before you have to wake up at seven in the morning and set my shit up for me crew people that was a bad yeah, night we also it was not that bad like for me it was shit in it it was bad for the crew they yeah. suffered a lot yeah, it wasn't us yeah. We also had a bunk that we couldn't like give up because it fell over shit in it. We yeah, it was just like, backpacks. The there was a, a, a pile of backpacks bunk. sleeping yeah. in a bed while humans were piled on the floor. Can you imagine what would have happened if that bus had broken down before we got pulled over and then everyone <laughs> had been on the bus and we got The cop over? gets on the bus and there's like 20 <laughs> people in one bus like... What's this going on here? That happened like two doing? or three hours later. But yeah, if that happened before. Oh my <laughs> god. Uh, people just laying on the floor. <laughs> and I slept through every oh. moment of this. I Were you awake when we hit the, the did, bridge? You didn't wake up we when cross? we when we took no. on the passengers either, no, did you? I didn't wait. I woke oh up god. in our destination, <laughs> so, Mark, and everyone woke up was in the like, morning to a regular <laughs> bus, and was just like, "Oh man, good night's sleep, everybody. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Like the crew is all half dead, and all of us are like freaked out. And Mark's just like, "What? What? What happened?" We're good. It's one of those. I could. Don't worry. I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. <laughs> We could have crashed, like the bus could have flipped over. I would have been like spun out of the bus, been in a snowbank asleep, and I would have Mark, woken up Mark later. Is sleeping as he <laughs> sinks to the yeah. bottom of the ocean, <laughs> just dr drowning in his sleep, just like, wow, oh, what a terrible dream. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, need a loud, you need some loud smoke detectors. I'll just say that, Mark. You yeah. need He's a, listening to fucking Ed Sheeran with his soundproof fucking AirPods in his ear. <laughs> This, with this three three year pre released AirPod Maxes, <laughs> Mark has actually been a beta testing AirPod Maxes since Tim Apple died. Yes, mm. or Tim Apple, or Tim Apple. Anyway, I remember waking up after all of that shit, and we were like, we might not even get to do a show today because the fucking bridge to wherever we were going was frozen over, and we barely. Dude, that was in like was thirty sketchy. minutes of having to cancel. That bridge was very sketchy. Well, because I, because I remember everyone was sitting there and they're like, "There's a lot more of us on this bus than they're supposed to be. Like, it's gonna be top heavy, right? And it's windy, and it's a narrow, icy bridge. Oh, no. And but and like we were driving across, and it was windy. Like it was one of those bridges where it's like a two lane bridge, and it felt narrow because we were on an enormous bus, and the wind was like, whoosh, like you know, like stereotypical <laughs> like gusty winds. It, everyone was pretty sketched out that we were going to get like blown over into the ocean or something. Mark just <laughs> blissfully. And the wind was all. <laughs> you know how wind is. You know how you wind is. About. You know. To be fair, that's exactly though, how guess, wind is. Yeah, this yeah, was the yeah. same. Um, this was the same tour where Mar you and Ethan were sick like the whole time too. Oh though, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? yeah, absolutely. So I had an excuse so, for being asleep. Yeah, getting I a think good I night's sick. sleep at least was probably really good for you after all that shit. Because yeah, it's the same tour too where Wade's nuts hurt inexplicably. Dude, yeah, I thought I was gonna have to have a <laughs> testicle cut off that tour. That <laughs> oh sucked. yeah, that was another crisis <laughs> that, was that so happened. Sad. And Evan had the same shit in Australia that I had in Europe. We both broke the same testicle That's somehow. A serious in nut the same distress. Way. Yeah. That sucked, dude. I didn't. I didn't know how I was gonna be able to. Oof. Adrenaline was a good thing because the pain was real. That sucked. Yeah, I can. I can imagine. 
I mean, I'd much is rather do what you would eat than went through because your guys are so trivial compared to my ball pain. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we just got sick. I mean, it was pretty bad sick, but I, like, I don't want, I don't want consistent serious ball trauma. Did you ever figure out what it was? Yeah, I had a, I had a diagram with a picture of a penis, and it showed what tube got infected with something or another. It wasn't it wasn't a UTI. Whose penis? But it was, well, Evans and mine. We both both our penis. You compared it. Overlaid? It was an L. It was an LPI. I'm pretty sure. Okay, cool. I don't. Yeah, I forget what it was. E Evan, a lower penis. Evan just texted infection. me, Nut yeah, Brothers. That's it. Yeah. Do you remember what that was called? What we what was wrong with us? Because it was the same thing. Ball trauma is my band name. Ball, ball trauma. <laughs> uh, what was Evan? What, was, did, what did we have? It was actually in the middle of the night. Uh, Mark would sleepwalk and just go punch random cast members in the nuts as he was asleep. Pretty sure that was what happened. I can feel like it wasn't. I felt fine. It was just like moving was so painful just from that one spot. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Here we go. Epididymitis is what Evan is saying it was. Epididymitis. So your epididymis was infected? I don't even know what the fuck that did. That would be what that means. Definitely Google image search that live on stream. There's a... Well, I'm not showing my... Oh, thank God I'm not showing my screen because there's just a dick. Epididymitis is an inflammation of the epididymis. My sperm tube was swollen and clogged. Ah, it can cause pain and swelling in the... Well... <sighs> the more you know. I had a natural condom in that infection. <laughs> That's what doctors call it, man. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Wow, you're Nature's from natural condom. condom. <laughs> <laughs> go, you go into the free clinic. Like, oh, help me. God, it hurts. I think I've got, I think I've got epididymitis. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Nature's condom. <laughs> Nature's way of saying you shouldn't reproduce, and we agree. But here, have some pills. <laughs> that was so, the the doctor's office though was so great. I loved everything about how the doctors were over there. I'm not being facetious or anything. It oh, was okay. Just really well, we were in the UK, amazing. right? So you got to go to an NHS office, I guess. I walked in. They asked me my name, and I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll fill out the paperwork. And they're like, Paperwork. I was like, What? And they're like. We just need your name so they know who to call back. I waited like 20 minutes. They called me back and dude was like, oh, you have to see a specialist. But, you know, I just, I'm just going to go talk to the specialist. You know, I'll, I'll be right back. And then he like went and talked to the specialist, came back, wrote me a prescription. And it was just like, all right, see ya. I was like, but don't I, I got money. <laughs> He's like, money? We don't, we don't take, what is money? <laughs> what? Imagine living in a country where they think healthcare is a right. Wow. I spent like 10 or 20 bucks. From the doctor and the on medicine, that was like a twenty dollars prescription to fix it up or whatever, and that was it. No paperwork, no crazy in fucking insurance in America. Hassles. It was literally just bought my medicine, cured my balls. It was a great day. <laughs> in America, you would have been forced to take an ambulance ride because the hospital you went to would not have been allowed to see you. The ambulance ride would have cost you thirty thousand dollars. It would have been five thousand dollars to see a general uh, medicine practitioner, then another five to see a specialist. The prescription would be twenty thousand dollars, but unfortunately, fortunately, they would give you a nineteen thousand dollar discount, so you'd only have to pay a thousand dollars out of pocket to get the prescription, and you'd be paying your medical bills for the next three years of your life if you're lucky. Probably more like a decade because medical bills are not fucking around in the U.S. and they follow you forever. People are asking what kind of paperwork you have to have for like a simple infection. Anytime you go to a doctor's office, you have to give them a full medical history, all of your allergies. You got to give them like your your grandparents' name, your great grand, anyone that might have to pay in case you die. You got to give them all those names, all that info. Like you have to fill out so much shit. God then, forbid you're in a location where your insurance doesn't cover either. Oh, if, like God. I have, I have insurance that's mostly California coverage. So like any most places in California, I could totally find a doctor. If I was like visiting family in Ohio and I got very ill, I am absolutely fucked. It's insane. Like I'm I didn't know how gonna... I felt about healthcare because like you know growing up we don't know any, we don't know shit about fucking healthcare, but like. I realized how bad insurance and all that shit is whenever I saw how good it was there, how simple and easy and streamlined it was, and how, like, I was like, man, I don't care what they pay in taxes. This is so worth it because health insurance, now maybe if employers help with health insurance, it's, like, pretty cheap. I don't know. But being self-employed or being your own business and covering health insurance, it's so expensive per month. It's so expensive. It can't possibly be that much in taxes. Yeah. Right? 
it's it's just one of those things where if you grow up with it, you don't know anything different, and then you see something else, and you're like, oh, oh, it can, oh, it can, oh, it can happen that way. Oh, well, that seems better. And then it's, <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just kind of. You know, what, that what is the do? most pure reaction I've ever heard, and it could not be more accurate. It, it just is one uh, of those seems better. It one of those, it seems seems better. Seems better, don't it? Seem, seems better. Yeah, whatever. But the free market. Mm, delicious. Someone the market that won't let you die of an illness just because you can't afford to buy something. Mm. Oh, wait, I'm being told the market doesn't care if you can't afford to buy something. Mm -hmm. Never mind. You're probably going to die of an illness because you can't afford to buy something. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Capitalism, that, though, you, am I right? For those of you that aren't in America, in order to sign up for health insurance, you have like a one-month window in November to sign up. And if you don't get it in that time span, you're just, I don't know what the fuck. You're just not covered. Well, I mean, there is other options. It's not just November, you know, but. You can get Cobra. That's totally not scam. I didn't even know that existed. See, we don't know. And I don't even know. I tried calling some of like the big, not, I don't want to go too far into this, but I remember trying to get in health insurance the past two years. I tried calling some of like the big name healthcare places I know of, and they keep sending me to like these third party things that no one even takes anyway. They're like, oh, oh yeah, you want health insurance. We got you here. This is uh, Uncle Bill's health insurance covered everywhere. <laughs> and I go in, I'm like, here's my Uncle Bill's card. And they're like, dude, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We don't take Uncle Dude, that, Bill. <laughs> that is the most fascinating thing about insurance because the fact that you can get it and you're in America, right? You're in America. All of America, the United States, you get insurance where you are and it just doesn't work in other places in America, in yeah, your yeah. own city. There's places that it just doesn't work and and you and you go like well what would i need to do i i actually am kind of curious what would it take how much would it cost to get covered anywhere for through insurance how much would that actually cost because i don't know if like f from a single source or company i don't know if that's actually possible you yeah. would have pro probably carry different policies or something i don't i can't imagine because i've never even looked into it because it's it's too, it's too expensive for me, I yeah. assume. It, I, I think that's the only way. You just have to have multiple different coverages. and Or just never get sick there. Come back home. Just stay stay sick in your home place yeah, and don't exactly. get sick anywhere. You and, choose when you get sick, right? Yeah, it's not like an you, emergent thing. It's yeah, like a casual... You better not get sick out in the <laughs> wilds of the next neighborhood. Yeah, of course you're going to pay. Yeah, they got to take you to that hospital. It's a weird, strange How? hospital. They don't understand your your insurance's language there. This would be a really <laughs> dumb question, but how does it work? Like, you know, with help with like dental insurance, for example, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what dental insurance you get, generally they're like, okay, we cover X amount of cleanings per year. You can get X amount of filling, whatever, an emergency visit. Like there's a certain like amount they'll help you with. And then it's like, after that, you're all out of pocket. Um, in like places like the UK and Canada and stuff, is it literally just like you have an issue, you go in, and no matter how many times you have to go in in a year, you're covered because of the way the system's set up? Or is it, eventually they're like, oh, well, yeah, even effectively taxes, you're asking you like if if there's a deductible, like is there eventually a limit, a limit of where how you're many out of pocket? Places you can like times you can go into something. I don't actually know. I haven't heard of that because I would assume that would mean if you Always were covered. if you were in the UK and you got like cancer. You're, 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 that requires, you know, extended treatments, repeated visits, uh, long-term care. That, as far as I know, that's all sort of covered. Yeah, I'm, right? seeing, like you, I'm seeing no limit run out. in chat. Some, so I'm assuming. some people are saying Canada doesn't cover dental specifically. Mm. Dental is different in the UK. Well, and dental is different than medical, at least in the U.S., which maybe not everywhere. Dental is not yeah. necessarily medical. I mean, that makes medical, sense. Dental will be a little but, bit different. Yeah. But I'm just thinking in general, like even doctor's visits, it's like, oh, you, you've got your two checkups this year. You know, you've got to pay out of pocket. Listen, we only cover up to f you. You pay the first five thousand, and then we cover the next one hundred dollars, and then after that, you're on your own. Like it's so screwy. I still don't. I honestly, to this day, after signing up for health insurance the last like four or five years, I still don't fucking know how it works. I don't even know if I have a good plan. I have no clue. Basically, I call someone on the phone, tells me like what I need to get, and they're like, "We can't tell you this is what you should get, but wink, wink, get this." And we're like, oh, "Okay, I guess I'll go with." Plan A, like, oh, good. We'll send you the brochure. Just acknowledge that you read. You had an opportunity to read. And it's like, 
Yeah, I had. I guess I could have hung up the phone and read through your eight hundred thousand page document, but I just, I just need health insurance. It, I'm not it, gonna call and wait six hours to sign up again. Like, oh, good, good. So you give us your consent. Yes. <laughs> good. Move on. I, uh, so you're gonna pay X amount per day. Yeah, per day. Yes. I no. Am I? All right. You said yes. Moving on. And, and, and that's literally how the phone calls fucking go. I'm always like so perplexed and by the time i hang up i'm like i don't know if i got health insurance a new car or nothing i have no idea what just happened here here is an example of how complicated health insurance in america is i i have a company to pay my editors and myself so i have markiplier yes. and uh like it's it's it exists so that also i can get health insurance through it uh and i give health insurance to all my employees i asked my accountant to get the best Health insurance possible, the best. I said, uh, like no, uh, like prices no option. Get the best, as I want my employees Can to have the best. Can you hire me? Damn. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that after. <laughs> <laughs> oh baby, let me that go sounds like a pants for this interview. <laughs> that sounds like a hard no. Continue. Yeah, hey. we'll talk about this later, Wade. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I I have ADD, right? So I get a prescription for Adderall. I I take it daily. Like it helps me focus and do this stuff. My doctor writes said prescription, right? So he <laughs> writes uh, a prescription for 90 days because you need to get it in person every time. Uh, so he writes it for 90 so I don't have to come in every month. Um, we've been working for five years. He trusts me for this and he's like, cool, you're good. Uh, I go to the pharmacy and they say, oh, we filled it for 30. And I go, but why? And they but said, for 90. It's for not, the doctor said for 90. And they were like, oh, your insurance only covers 30. So we did 30. And I said, why did they get to make that call about what I, my doctor thinks I should have? So I called up the insurance and I, yeah. I, I asked him, I was like, hey, my doctor wrote this prescription for 90 days. So you don't cover it. And he's like, oh, we, we cover it for uh, circumstances where it's essential for a person. And I was like, but it's essential for me. How do we prove that? And he's like, oh, we need a note from your doctor. And I said, my doctor wrote like the prescription? prescription to give me 90 pills. I'm thinking he thinks I need it. Dude. <laughs> it's like... I wish no. I thought you were joking, but I know for a fact this I'm is not. exactly how it the, goes down. Legit. So I had to get another note from my doctor to my insurance for them to be... Okay, fine. All right. We'll give you your 90. And I'm like, why do they get to make that choice? Why do they get to make that choice? And it's just very strange. I remember working in the medical industry when I worked it with eyes and um there were days like the doctor would like take off or not have days and those were days where like the techs we had to sit like in this, like we weren't helping patients at all. We, we, our general job was to help patients, get ready to see the doctor, work up patients, whatever. But like we had dedicated like days and hours where our only task, the only thing we had to do was call all these fucking insurance companies and get uh, patients pre-certified so they could get operations or get medicine or, you know, get the treatment they needed. And pre-certs were the, the, that was the goddamn worst and it definitely interfered with patient care because patients were like oh i really need to get this done but i can't afford me like we got to go through your insurance so we'll have to get the pre-certs done if you want to do it that way and like there's no way around it and they were just there it was so horrible because some insurance companies worked a little bit easier than others so on and so forth but like yeah there were dedicated days where we could not be with patients because we had to have time to just literally spend all of our fucking day dealing with insurance companies trying to get pre-certifications mm -hmm. and so on and so forth it's such a horrible system, and the fact that there's a middleman, the insurance companies at all, is so mind-boggling to me. I get what they originally, like, their intended purpose is, was, but it's become so fucking convoluted now where everything is so delayed and so horrible. I forgot I had bills from the dentist office where I thought I was done seeing the dentist, like, in November for six months till my next cleaning or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then just, like, all of a sudden, a week ago, I got a call like, hey, by the way, you owe $3,000. <laughs> 3000 for what? And they're like... Oh, well, we talked to your insurance company. Remember when you came in back in June? Well, we've been fighting with the insurance, but they won't do anything. So this all falls on you now. And it's like, oh, I forgot I came in. I thought that was covered by now. But it just takes so long for shit to process like that. And then all of a sudden you're just hit with all this stuff at once. And it's like, it's so stressful. Yeah. It's so fucking stressful. Sorry, I don't, I don't have to keep on the insurance. I know there's a really random tangent, just something 
I don't think everyone in the world knows what we deal with here in the U.S. And I don't know what it's like to live anywhere else, obviously, because I've always only been here. But like, well, I mean, oh. it, it's eye opening for a lot of people who don't live in America, because for, yeah. for people that do have systems in place where, you know, it, it's a single payer or whatever, um, it, it is it is sometimes shocking to see what goes on uh, in terms of like how healthcare is dealt with um, in America. It's it's. I, I think that everyone can agree it <laughs> don't exactly work good like the amount of um, the amount of GoFundMe campaigns that are about medical bills has yeah. made GoFundMe I think they made it made GoFundMe the third largest insurer of health in the world uh, or some some crazy let me double check because I don't I don't I don't want to talk I remember my... seeing that like headline on social media or something like that. Yeah, uh, but the, there is an exorbitant amount of people that have GoFundMe's that are purely dedicated towards helping with medical bills, and that's just a factor of in America, medical bills are life destroying. In many many circumstances, they will destroy your life, and like Bob said, they they chase you, they chase you around. They do. <sighs> It's just, it's not a fun topic. It's, it's taxes in Denmark are between 35 and 52. I pay 35% tax anyway, and I don't get shit for my government. Not everyone does. Most people who get W 2s don't. As a self employed person, I can tell you, <laughs> taxes are a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> if I could pay that much, if I could pay the amount of taxes I pay right now, and I would not have to pay for health insurance, not only would I save a lot of money, I would take that trade <laughs> because <laughs> the insurance that I pay out the ass for is not even good. And I know there are lots of, there are single examples of single payer systems in the world that don't work well either. Yeah, exactly. And that like, it's not, I don't think the way that the American health system is set up makes sense because I don't think health is an industry. Mm. I don't think yeah. health should be work run in the same way that a business is. Mm. I, I understand Agreed. I think that's an important difference distinction to make, but I'm also not advocating for any specific health system. I'm not an expert. I have no, no idea which yeah, type of single payer system is best. If there's another form that's good, mm -hmm. I just it's in it's inescapable that where America is in terms of healthcare is untenable. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it, not it's not a system that works. Yeah, and I, it, I'm not suggesting even how I would change it. I'm not an expert. It's just not working. It's terrible. Yeah, exactly. It leaves Agreed. people not getting health care. It leaves people not taking their prescriptions. It leaves people absolutely broke so they can buy insulin that 50 years ago cost $25 a vial and modernly costs thousands a vial or whatever. Like whatever is happening is no longer acceptable. It's way beyond, ooh, it's an issue we should work on. People's health is suffering. People's health is not something that can be monetized and you know evaluated in the same way that business decisions are yeah it's just we not pay the same. like it's really messed up i think we pay like somewhere between i, I have to look I, I can't remember thought my head but i think we pay like six to eight hundred dollars a month for molly and i to be insured and we have an honestly not great health insurance plan and the only reason we have to have it is not because we spend that much on medical stuff per month but just in case something goes horribly wrong and we're like having to pay millions of dollars it's like an emergency you know things so that we're not left destitute because something bad happens to us or we have a heart attack or something yeah. like that and that's that's what's so fucky about it, is we overpay for nothing so that way in case something goes horribly wrong then we're covered and they won't let us die or ruin our lives completely financially mm -hmm. like that's yeah. it's awful and, and taxes and, like you said bob taxes yeah. too self-employment all you have to, you literally form a business and all of a sudden that whole self-employment thing goes away it's like why do we why is that a thing I, I may, i'm sure it has a reason why it exists or existed but like the fact that you spend, I don't know how much, $500 to form a business and all of a sudden self-employment tax is just like, bye-bye, mm. is fucky too. That, that whole, the total tax systems, I don't even understand all that shit. I know I'm a, like, oh, I had to form an LLC that files as an S-corp or something. Like, my accountants were like, oh, yeah, you just got to do this, this, and this. I'm like, I, do I have to do, do I have to run my, do I have to stream differently? Do I have to, no, <laughs> no, no, you just file as an S-corp now because you're a business. Oh, of course, that, uh, obviously. Of course. Yeah, yeah I, I understand that, that. That makes sense. Yeah, it's one of those things where if if the uh, insurance system worked the way that people idealize it to, if it worked, 
we wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't even be talking about it because it wouldn't be a problem because it would just work. It would work the way it should work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Like Bob said, we're not experts in anything. Like we, we are not anything like that. It's, it's one of those things where there's clearly a problem. Uh, doing nothing is not the solution. So something has yeah. to be done. Uh, and even just acknowledging that something has to be done is a good step in the right direction as opposed to many of the other roadblocks that get thrown up a lot of the ways. Yeah. Either way, I think everyone can agree that uh, shit ain't good and it shouldn't be destroying people's lives. And uh, I agree with Bob that I don't believe healthcare should be a business. Uh, I agree, hundred percent. Like, I, I feel like it. It should. If we, if we care about our fellow citizens and if we care about the people in our country and the people and the well being of our neighbors, then we should. <laughs> we should be more open minded to getting uh, the whole thing of people being alive is that we usually want them to stay alive. And there's a lot of things in life that get in the way of that. Uh, that usually come in. in in the way in the form of things attacking our general health and uh generally speaking i want to see people being taken care of and not having to choose to not get care because they can't afford it that's yeah it. yeah 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 that's that happens why... a lot too we avoid going sometimes we're like eh, we'll probably just be okay if we don't go in if i use the word easily f favorite seems like the wrong word but i'm not sure how else to say this my my favorite response when when you have this discussion online and people inevitably weigh in because it's very politicized, which is insane to me, uh, but it's very politicized healthcare in our country. People weigh in and their general tone is, "That's not my problem. Mm. My I like, if you want to live your life that way, I, I'm not telling you what your ideal should be, but I can't imagine a person." who thinks about the, the concept of someone being sick or needing healthcare, being financially unable to afford it, and there being no system by which they could get the healthcare that they need. And your response is, Why, what does that have to do with me? I'm healthy. Like, yeah, obviously we don't want anyone to sacrifice their own life completely for someone else's, but small sacrifices, especially financial, or political concessions. If you believe very strongly some political position or another, giving a, giving in and compromising a political position about how you think the government should work or how you think money should be spent or whatever, so that less humans will die or less humans will go without medicine or more humans who are downtrodden might get access to help that they need that could improve their life, that could allow them to get a job or improve their situation. Uh, I just I can't, I can't imagine being so stubborn it, it, or so selfish that you don't see that that is a benefit to your country or your city, your your whatever, your your world. The, just crazy to me. Yeah, that's always blown my mind about people politicizing everything. Um, it, it, me, I want every American to be at their best because I don't like stupid Americans. I don't like it when people get unhealthy either. Like when it comes to education and stuff like that, like why is that a political issue that I want everyone in America to have an opportunity for an incredible education and to be healthy? That's not politics. That's just common decency. That's, that, that's uplifting your fellow citizens and that's just being like, I want the best opportunity for everyone. I want everyone to be healthy. I want everyone to not be in crippling debt. You know, it, it's these kinds of things that it it seems illogical to fight against uh, things that could help everyone like just rise a little bit. Like just yeah. just help people. Yeah. Because because yeah, in the those... long run it's better. They've done studies on like if pe like the cost the cost of of like productivity loss and the cost of like uh, like not giving enough people education. If people are only monetarily focused, there are studies that prove that these these kinds of policies, if you want to politicize them, like they actually come out and make you more money in the end. It, it creates more in the end. And and I, if that's the way you want to look at it, fine. Look at it that way. Yeah. But from just a human standpoint it, it's so clear it's so clear yeah. anyway this is one of our more serious topics we've covered 
Yeah, I don't know how we got on to healthcare. I guess we were talking about tour and stuff. It just sort of happened. But yeah, yeah we mean, went from my balls to a real well, my balls I mean, really led down a good topic. When you really do see how different it can be. And there's yeah. like uh, I would say like the NHS, I don't know the NHS very well. There are probably some flaws about the NHS, but from just a perspective of comparing my experiences with health to that, I'm like, holy shit. That's awesome. Uh so there is a way to do it. And, you know, it's it's just kind of one of those things where it's just like, oh, you can do it. And if America is America, then why wouldn't it go at this problem with the attitude that it usually has of, I can do it better than you. Oh, you think your NHS is so good. Oh, watch what we're going to do. Like, why is that not the attitude that we're having? Of course we want to do it better than everyone else. Why wouldn't that be how we want to do it? It just, it, it makes sense. You look at all the other people that are benefiting from these systems, whatever flaws they have, and we're like, oh, I bet we can do it with no flaws or minimal flaws or less flaws because we're America. Like, shouldn't that be the attitude that we have about it? Couldn't we? Couldn't I, we do it better? At, at least part of the problem, I think, is that uh, I, I can't imagine how, but it seems like there's some some amount of Americans in general who would look at it and say, oh, we are doing it better. Our system, the form of healthcare that we have is inherently better mm. because it's capitalistic, because it's a free market. The only issue with our healthcare, the reason it's not working correctly is because uh, liberal regulations are spoiling the free market. If the if the markets if the healthcare market was 100% deregulated, it would it would take care of itself. It would find the the path of least resistance. It would find the maximum benefit for all consumers, and it would be ideal. And like, I mean, I don't, in my opinion, I don't believe that. I also believe numbers and facts tend to disprove that when it comes to healthcare. But mm -hmm. I honestly think that's part of the problem, is that uh, that there's some portion of of our country in general that believes so deeply and maybe blindly in the idea of like free market capitalism that there's nothing it can't fix there's no situation where free market capitalism is wrong this it's the best way to run anything that involves money mm -hmm. and like i think that's a fundamentally flawed yeah. view on healthcare and i'm not saying that i'm an expert or for any reason have any authority to say that my opinion is correct but healthcare is just different than a business it, it just is. It is. Because if you fog up a business, you declare bankruptcy, maybe you default on your debts, maybe people lose money. If you fog up on healthcare, humans die, mm. which is worse to me in like an immeasurable way. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm insane. But yeah. It seems like it's subjectively different yeah. in, in, in several meaningful and, you know, important ways. Yeah, revolving it, around death and illness yeah with with capitalistic ideals and there are a lot of benefits to be had from that but at the end of the day it is about making the most money possible that's kind of yeah. what the end goal of most companies and corporations and things like that is um and with healthcare, what you're seeing right now is companies trying to make the most money possible out of healthcare, and what that comes into is my health insurance telling me they're not going to pay for the 90 if they don't have to, but they can be talked into it because they're not morally justified at all. And at the end of the day, a healthcare comes down to m morals. It, it's about it's about caring about people. That, that that's what it is, and, and making that a business just really distorts the motivation behind caring for people. If you if you want it to be free market, then you have to understand that the first priority will be money and not care. They will only do the care in the way that most businesses say, we care about our customers. And if you want to turn oh, patients yeah. into customers, well, I mean, they are right now. That's what it is. Um, you know, that, that distorts the benefits that can be taken out of it. And again, this isn't political. Not even a little bit. Uh, it shouldn't it, be. It, Politicians it shouldn't make be. it political, but yeah. it shouldn't be. Yeah, it's common. And sense. people, I mean, even we are probably to an extent spewing sh stuff that we've um, heard politicians say to some extent for, for or against these things. Which yeah, I've not done. I, I've got. I'm going to freely admit I've not done all the research, so I don't know anything about what the right way to handle this is. All I know is that getting to experience healthcare in a different way was very eye-opening because it just revealed how awful and shit the process is here and i've worked 
in the medical industry. Like I said, I used to have to deal with the pre-certifications and stuff like that, and that sucked. Being on the other end, having health insurance partially covered through my employer was nice, but being self-employed or having your own um, business, like we have no idea what the fuck we're doing, the, how to navigate these waters. I have no idea if I've got good insurance, bad insurance any given day. I don't know if it, what it's going to cover, where it's going to cover. It's just such a nightmare to deal with. And it's an unnecessary headache. And like Mark said, these insurance companies are, I mean, they're, are they all, I don't want to say they're all for profit, but some of them are, but from what I know, they're all for profit or most of them at least are. And uh, they've got entire parts of their business that are literally just money that they've made that they're funneling into a team that makes these commercials that are like, we care. That's why you should sign up with United or whoever else. And it's like, that's not the CEO like stepping in there and like just telling you how, you, how he's going to change things. That's literally just a marketing department making them look good as they funnel money away from us. And obviously, if they're for profit, they've got to charge people more than what they're spending helping people, which means that we as a collective country are paying more for health insurance than we would be spending just covering the medical expenses because there's a middleman taking a cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know. I, people that think that's good or okay, I, I I disagree myself. I think it's awful, but again, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what the right system is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. At the, at the end of the day, what we are proponents of is caring about our fellow man and woman, like our fellow humans in our country and other countries. Like just generally speaking, I personally, I want the best for every American. I I literally just want the best for them. That's it. I want them to have the best opportunities. I want them to have the best future. And again, like Wade said, we're not experts. We're, we're not here to uh, give credence to one specific solution or another because we don't really know. But at the end of the day, being open to the possibility is what's really important it, to the idea that it's possible. And I hate that when people are like, oh, it can't be done. It's impossible. It's like, the fuck, you quitter? What are you, a quitter? What the <laughs> hell is wrong with you? You, We can't do you it. Quitter. I, I'm sorry. In what is proposed to be the most powerful, richest nation in the world, we just can't do it. It's impo- That's so dumb. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. We can't do it. Yeah, okay, sure. Whatever. You know, I was told, I, I forgot this aspect of it. Whenever I was trying to get health insurance, every time I've tried to get it, um, one, like I said, they try to put us on like some kind of weird, like, I think they call it like marketplace plan. It's like not even original, like through them, it's through some third party. But also in order to get health insurance, I have to like triple pinky promise swear that Molly and I aren't trying to have a kid. They, they, they really hardcore, like you smoke, do you drink? Are you pregnant? No. Do you plan on becoming pregnant? No. Have you even thought about a child in the last six years? Uh, do you think you'll ever want to be a, like, they really hammer home the whole kid aspect of it because they do not want to help with that. Mm -hmm. And that's been the three different health insurances we've had over the last like six years. Uh, because I was on my mom's health insurance till I was what, like 20, well, I was the, the health through my company, but then you, I think you can be on your parents' insurance till you're like 26 or something. But like, since I've had to worry about it myself, that's really one they super drive home hard is like anything to do with babies. It's like, no, 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 you shall not fucking pass. So that's yeah. another thing that's kind of fucked up because people that want to like plan families, it's like how if I wanted to have a kid, I don't know what the hell we would do. Where do you find health insurance when you're self-employed that's going to help you with that too? But that's been all of the ones I've called. Listen, guys, I don't know if you guys had that experience where they've asked you those questions or not. No, but Mandy has a real job and we use real insurance. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But that's the thing. We have businesses. I don't know how the hell you get a business to like... I don't. I don't know how I use my business. I, well, well, the thing about that's a whole the thing about the thing about employers getting better coverage options and more affordable coverage options is the number of employees they have. Mm -hmm. It's it's effectively collective bargaining, which gives them leverage, mm -hmm. which is what unions do. Uh, which, if there was some sort of union of YouTubers, you could potentially get some collective bargaining. But because an employer, say for example. I don't know, General Motors, the American car company, General Motors, they employ like thousands of people. They're a huge, enormous company. So they go to uh, insurance companies and they're like, hey, we have all these people and we want to do business with you because your insurance coverage seems all right. But because we're bringing you this business, we have, you know, 8,000 employees and a large percentage of them will, will get your service. 
we want a lower rate and we want you to add some extra coverages to it because you know how many people about you're going to get. But if you're in a, if you have a company like yours where you have like two employees ostensibly, you and your editor, mm -hmm. you have no more leverage than if you're an individual on the market. No company cares whether you give them your business or not. So you get their public facing options either way. Yeah. So the benefit of employer provided health insurance is the same benefit of union negotiated health insurance. Like I believe I'm not 100% sure, but SAG, Screen Actors Guild, is the union that all the actors that are in like movies and TV and stuff are members of. I believe SAG offers union negotiated insurance uh, options because SAG is a huge union, at least in the US. It's like one of the main, if not the main actors union. Yeah. They have collective bargaining leverage against insurance companies. I'm sure they have other services that you can get through SAG that are related to the industry of being an actor or being in, you know, whatever performer. Uh, it's, it's about that as more than it's about being an actual business, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is something that is, uh, I guess as a small business owner, you completely lose out on, right? Yeah, man. The, the fact that there's discount health insurance kind of proves that the system doesn't work. Like it's, do you want to not die and not pay money or do you want to not die and pay a lot of money it's it's like if if like it's it's why is there an option why is there an option to still pay money and then be screwed over afterwards it's just like ugh, ugh, uh, something i could talk about for a long time but yeah anyway yeah. i feel like we've said our piece on this i'm sure we could talk in yeah. circles but i don't i don't think we need to beat it into the ground no, it's it's depressing. I I, it I should see be part better. of our job as being like entertaining and distracting people, but I think it's important to be real sometimes to let people know like we're going through a lot of the same struggles and shit that they are, and to share our opinions on things because we've experienced life, and you know just like everyone else has. And sure, we've got a different career and we've gotten to do some cool shit like go on tour and stuff. But like ultimately, yeah, Molly had an ear infection and in the middle of the night, like sun Saturday night, Sunday night. It was so bad. We went to the emergency room and I was told on chat, they gave us a bill for like over $2,000 for the doctor to come in and spend two minutes to say, hmm, yep, mid ear infection. And this was after she'd gone to an urgent care and been misdiagnosed with like an outer ear infection or something. I don't remember one of the two. They, they misdiagnosed her. They gave her a uh, like a moxicillin or something. They're like, all right, you're on your way. It didn't help. It got worse. We went to the ER and the guy's like, oh, very obviously you need drops because it's this kind of ear infection. And between the two, it was like $3,000 for basically to be told, you have an ear infection, here's some pills, wait wrong, here's some drops. $3,000 for that. That insurance didn't touch. They thank God touch you that. had insurance, right? Yeah, they, yeah, thank God insurance didn't do shit for that. <laughs> really saved your, ass. Like saved your six, ass on that one. $600, $800 a month for health insurance, and then something like that happens, they're like, emergency room? Oh, were you dying? Because even if you were, fuck you. And I mean, it's it's awful. It's It's insane to me. I mean, two minutes of my time, I, two minutes of my time worth $2,000? Like, fuck, man. Okay, so this this came up. Uh, I posted, I've been posting our firefighter videos because I'm way behind yeah, and, yeah. A, and a slacker. Yeah. And I was looking through the comments. This is only tangentially related, but I think it's related, and this is hopefully funnier. You know how we did that whole bit about firefighting for profit? Where we were like, <laughs> we were like, oh, well, we, we can only really, for that price, we can only put out half the fire or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like yeah. we did the, the whole bit yeah. at one of the fires. Uh, I, I, knew, I, I knew this, but I had forgotten this fact. And someone brought this up. Do you know firefighting for profit was a thing in like, <laughs> in like 19th century America? Firefighting companies <laughs> were for profit companies. What? So they would, uh, they would like show up to your house burning down and be like, Ah, it's like 300, 350 bucks. And if you couldn't pay, they would either leave or <laughs> like they would encourage you to like take a collection from your neighbors and see if you could save the house. Like it so, actually was a thing. Time out. And that, so while your house is burning, you had to go knock on your neighbor's door like, please, sir, can I have a $300 to save my house? Yeah, well, then the neighbors in the self-preservation interest of if your house burns down, maybe mine will because they're sort of right next to each other and it's the 19th century. So we've got, you know, there's no code regulations preventing our houses from being connected by gasoline-soaked wood beams or whatever crazy-ass nonsense they did in the, you know, before, before there were rules about that sort of shit to prevent fire spread. But yeah, 
So it's funny. So in our in our country where today we just had this extended conversation where we were like, healthcare is a for-profit business. Whoa, that's so messed up. But if we saw a for-profit fire company, we would today be like, Oof, whoa, whoa. it's like it's shocking, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe when we're old, for-profit healthcare will be shocking. Maybe. Yeah. It's entirely I hope possible. So we're older, clearly, we need the fucking help. <laughs> clearly, firefighters decided to change their ways. Clearly, counties and cities and whatever started creating publicly funded fire departments, so you don't have to worry about being able to afford to save your your house and if it ignites. Yeah, uh, I can't. We can only hope and dream that if that if that prog- progress is possible, maybe in the next century it'll be a laughable concept that health insurance and healthcare was once a for-profit business where uh, medications cost exorbitant amounts and doctors would refuse you service if you had paid the wrong insurance provider and uh, instead of just you know providing you life-saving treatment or you know alleviating your pain and suffering with their medical knowledge instead of uh, waiting to see if billing would allow them to be a doctor or not that day Mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah, I mean, we, I gotta, mean, we gotta hope, right? That, we gotta do what we can to change it. But we got—I I have to hope, or else everything in the entire world is pointless and depressing. Yeah, that—that that is probably the clearest picture mm-hmm. that you could paint towards what people are facing right now. Because with ambulances, it's the same way as that. You, someone breaks their leg. What? What do they say? Don't call me an ambulance. I can't afford that. Yeah. So what if yeah. the ambulance shows up and they're and you have to go? No. No, get away! I think don't touch me. Back. Don't I touch me. Medicine. Actually, refuse to go into the yeah. ambulance. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because it's so expensive, and there's a lot of for-profit yeah. ambulances out there that are not tied to hospitals at the moment, and it's it's but it's the same situation when you get to the hospital. Like I I've been to the hospital many times. I have I know hospitals very well, and yes, I I get good care there. The the I believe that American and American doctors are capable. Of of providing excellent care it's the whole money thing that's the problem that's where everything yeah. goes to shit and it it it's just it's so obvious like like bob said it's so obvious and i'm really hoping that in the future people will look back and be like wow that was crazy just like the way people probably in in countries with good uh, national health healthcare systems like the NHS or something like that probably it would look at America. Uh, uh, those countries looking at America is exactly what I hope we do in fifty years. Look back and be like, "Wow, that glad we're not that." <laughs> it's barbaric. Oh. It really is. It's barbaric. Yeah. Mm. What else can we talk about? <laughs> um. Hmm. I mean, it's getting kind of late. I don't know if you have a, a time you got to go today. Are we trying to move on? Uh, I was going to go at three, or? so I got like 30 minutes. Honestly, I could uh. just keep talking. <laughs> Wait, are you still doing your um? Are you still doing your nap thing? No, actually, no. I, I broke out of that. Uh, the thing, oh. my, con- my conclusion about the nap is, yes, it can work. Yes, it definitely gives you more time if you do it right. I would recommend going too low, but it makes sleep less enjoyable. And that alone is a deal breaker for me because I do like a good sleep. Like I don't sleep a ton, like six, seven hours is usually good enough for me. But I like getting a nice good sleep, laying down that bed, knowing I don't have to get up for a long time. Like sleep is nice. So if you have to do something, if you have to get shit done, yeah, you could do the polyphasic sleeping schedule. But it also robs a bit of the joy out of sleeping, which is kind of uh, kind of uh, sad. So I'm back. Sleeping to is thing. fun. Sleeping is awesome. Sleeping is pretty cool. People shit I on wish sleeping. I fell asleep better. Oh, I, f- I fell asleep so good. Like I could. Oh, I, could, well, I, know, I know. I was about to say I could. I could try uh-huh. to. I could try to teach you because it was a skill. I had to. I had to practice Dude, it. What do you? Okay. So what do you do? Do you okay. have like? T- t- no. Don't tell me to take melatonin because that shit no, no, makes no, my dreams no, crazy I, as I, hell. I, I don't recommend taking any sort of like chemicals and stuff like this. I mean, number one, ca- caffeine. You got to cut it back before you go to bed <sighs> like a lot. But that's fair. The biggest thing is breathing. Uh, taking big, heavy. The the thing that actually helped me is you know when Chica falls asleep. She lays down and she goes, 
and you know she just breathes big and so i started doing that at night i'm like it works for her why wouldn't it work for me and it really works because every time you take a big deep breath in could be through your nose or whatever just like and then just like push it out like let it like blast out of you and then you close your eyes and it's not about letting go it's about channeling your focus elsewhere so I do I do the breathing so that I can put myself in a relaxed state and when you're relaxed you're primed for sleeping you just have to get to the point where you relax and what helps me fall asleep really quickly Ed is Sheeran. yeah exactly I think what if I could go to sleep right <laughs> now and then I'm out like that yeah, it's fantastic no it works <laughs> what I do is actually I I try to not imagine uh, I, I try to feel. So I, I, number one, I relax every part of my body as much as I can. So I try to get in touch with my body. I try to relax every part of me so that I make sure from top to bottom, head to toe, that I'm relaxed. And then I try to kind of like separate moving my hands out of actually moving my hands and do it in my head. So it, it's very hard to imagine. But if you close your eyes, you know where your arms are positionally. Mm -hmm. You can feel them. You, you, even if you don't, you don't consciously look at them, you can know where they are in space. And so I use that kind of uh, sensation to literally lift my arms out of my arms on my bed. And in my mind, I'm moving. Them. It's not even imagining it. You're not visualizing anything. I'm just feeling it. And so hmm. when, when I do that, it helps detach me from like my body it helps me kind of let go of a lot of things there uh and then i kind of just do a little ritual where once i'm able to do that i imagine a table and this maybe if people don't have vivid imaginations they can't do this but i imagine a table with like two bowls one bowl's full of like uh, like uh, ba balls actually <laughs> okay but, well, and, well I, what i do is i pick up one i transfer it to the my other hand in my mind and i put it in the other bowl and i just count and I do that. And I've never made it past 10. I do not remember Weird. ever getting past 10. Because once I'm to that point where I'm fully in my head, I am already on the road to sleeping. The 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 ball the balls in the bowls really just help me keep that mindset. It keeps me in that space. So I relax with breathing. I let go, I, I relax all my body, I let go into my mind a little bit I kind of go into my head and the physicality of it helps and then I keep that mindset by doing something monotonous like putting bowl, balls in a bowl and I fall asleep really quickly that is a lot to take in I don't fall asleep quickly but I have never like doctor stranged my arms to putting balls in bowls it's either it's not astral projection what are you talking about uh, it's not, <laughs> no it's not a, it's in your head guys please no i'm with you i'm with you no chat is going on it guys it's nothing special you're just going in your head everyone everyone in chat is so confused by like your balls in a bowl your arms are it, moving in your mind i think it's something fundamental like counting sheep like the 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 imagining yeah, okay. of counting sheep is less about counting it's more about being in a space where you can see sheep in your mind and you you kind of like build that in your head and you let go of your body and you'll naturally fall asleep like imagining however there's a difference between that let me clarify there's a difference between that and imagining like scenarios and coming up with shit in your head that is counterintuitive to falling asleep because you're actively using your imagination me i'm not trying to use my imagination i'm actually trying to use my consciousness to force myself how do you stop that from leading to that because in my brain whenever i like i have to actively try to keep my mind blank that, that's what the balls in the bowl is for it's to keep me in that space so i don't wander i have a task i'm like this goes into that and it goes one at a time and i use both my hands and because i'm concentrated on that task i'm in my head and i'm not going anywhere else i'm at a table with with balls wait See, i tried no, i don't try that exact thing but like in my brain i just know i close my eyes i picture like okay picking up a ball Putting it in the bowl, picking up a ball. Not just imagine. No, it's, like, it's not imagining. We're bleeding. It's, my brain would just ask a question that would change the scenario. Because so it's, it's not about imagining. I, I'm. That's why I literally like try to detach the feeling of my arms from my actual arms. Is because I, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm not. I'm not worried about imagining it. It's not as vivid as my imagination would normally be. It's, it's about feeling okay. it. So I, that's why I say touching it, putting in both hands, really feeling it, so that, so that I can let go of the imagination and I don't bring those elements. If you're imagining 
imagining things. Gotcha. It's it, that's counterintuitive in my experience. Anytime so I, you're, you're more imagining the feeling of it. Not you're not visualizing. I'm it. not trying to imagine the feeling. I'm trying to physically feel it, but in my head, I'm trying to inca- like really feel it. Not imagine, feel it, not fakey, fakey, not up in my head, imagine it, like feel it. I'm trying to stay connected. Right. I mean, you're really trying, I'm not even trying to be feel. funny, but you're really trying to feel the ball as you move them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No, it, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm really not trying to be funny. Like, I, no, I, I, I get what you're I saying. Totally like, I can get actually it. close my eyes. I can, I can, ima- not, um, well, it is imagine, uh, Yeah, you could I call can... it, like, it's, it's different words, like, it, but the meaning is, is like, it could be the same. It's hard to. It's discern. like a lemon. So I'm, I'm picturing myself, or I'm, I'm feeling a lemon in my hand, which yeah. you know has like you can feel the skin of it, and then you like put it in your other hand, set it down. Yeah, there, I, I get what you're saying as far as that goes. There, there's, it's difficult to explain. There's two for me in my head. There's two different ways that I can imagine something. I can imagine something in a vivid scene with full col- color and accuracy, and that helps me like with creativity. That's that's like creative stuff. And then like there's the kind of imagination where if I close my eyes and I just have a sense of self and I can like feel my limbs and I can and I can see where I am and how I'm laying and it's for me it's just different. There's there's two different separate things. It's not as clear it's not really like vivid imagery. It's probably what Bob you're saying about uh, how your imagination works because you, you can't picture things in your head. It's it's more of that. Like I, I think just in a way, it, that's how it goes. Yeah. Oh, you I'm said not, how it goes. I thought you just said tacos to end your yeah, sentence. Tacos, that's in it. a way, yeah. tacos. Yeah. I it's think everyone can agree with tacos. that. Yeah. Yeah, I someone, saw a gift the other day of our um, the drowning the drowned man with the tacos four from the Ouija board. <laughs> they uh oh whoops uh wait so this is going into something i don't know if mark would agree with exactly characterizing it like this streaming is better something agreed that mm. yeah uh i've always thought i don't think about this a lot but in the context of us have you ever tried mindful meditation no I or do you know what mindful because it's like essentially what you're describing mark sounds mm. like mindful meditation to me it, it could be like, it's more sensory than a lot of mindfulness exercises are. Mindfulness uh, exercises and meditations tend to focus on your breath mm. and the sensation of breathing in like in like the physicality of it. Yeah. But um. But yeah, it's it. I feel like you would be terrible, and I feel like it might be a good practice for you, Wade. If you look into mm. mindful meditation in general mm. yeah, and Google try and find that. some exercises, because like what Mark is describing is sounds a lot like a mindful meditation exercise. It's a way to people, at least when I was younger, I was I've always been into meditation, and um, when I was younger, I thought it meant trying to keep your mind empty mm-hmm. like trying yeah, to shut it go for mm-hmm. which which is like i feel like what a lot of people it makes sense but that is hard to do and yeah, not realistically or not realistic to try to achieve and it doesn't help you relax actively trying to shut down your thoughts is actually really taxing and mm-hmm. it doesn't it, it like you can do it but it's not beneficial yeah. the idea of mindfulness is like you need to learn the skill like, well, I'm almost like Mark was describing of you have a thought, it enters your mind, and you don't explore it. You don't like engage with it. You allow it to exist. And it's like you're, you know, strangers passing on the street. You're not trying to prevent it from existing and you're not trying to make it go away. But what you're doing is you're choosing to stay focused on some specific thing like mm. your breath or ball the balls in the bowl like mark was talking about and it's a it's a way of learning how to create focus that is not focus at the exclusion of like everything else in your world or in your mind mm. but it's yeah. focus despite the fact that your mind is noisy and busy and you're always going to have thoughts and you're always going to have thoughts about your thoughts but like you can learn to calm that down and i think it's funny because i'm in i'm now i'm no expert but I, I like mindful breathing and mindfulness exercises help me feel less frantic and scattered all the time. Mm-hmm. But I've never been able to apply them to sleeping. When there's something about my life or my personality, I, I don't like sleep or something. I don't know. I actively do stuff that makes my experience of falling asleep and getting good sleep worse, mm-hmm. which is crazy because I like sleep once i'm doing it yeah but like i i don't know and it's like it's like a 
I don't understand it. It's a thing about myself I don't understand. But uh, but mindfulness, it's a great technique. And it might help you, Wade, because I feel like you do, like it's clear from the way you talk and stuff, you have a very active mind. And that's not that's not a yeah. problem. And it makes you very talkative and, and creative in conversations. But I can imagine that must be exhausting when you don't. Well, I sleep like you a don't baby want when I fall to, asleep. And I don't, don't wake want to wake up. You guys that. know from hanging out with me, I sleep till you guys wake my ass up. Like I will sleep till two, three, four in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. But uh, falling asleep is awful. Uh, I will, if I don't have a medium, like, you know, usually what I do is I'll find something kind of calm. Like lately, my thing is, I don't know if you guys know the game RimWorld. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But I found a, like a 300 episode playlist of RimWorld. And Good I will God. just sit there and I will watch some of those videos, just kind of like I'll have my eyes closed at some point, just listening to what's happening. And I'll just like slowly doze off because it's a somewhat chill game. Or like it used to be Civilization. I used to watch some of the Civilization games. I'd watch people play that. And like eventually after like three or four videos, it's like, okay, I'm dozing. I can close everything and I can go to sleep now. But if I don't have something like that to help me get to the point of sleep, it's like I'll close my eyes and then like my brain will just be like, oh, you're awfully tired. Been a long day. But what if death happens? Are you scared of death, Wade? And it's like, okay, well, I'm awake now. Uh, <laughs> thanks, brain. And then I roll around. I'm trying to like change my like, calm down again. And then I lay on one side. I get like the pillow gets warm. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not comfortable. Roll my other side. Oh, now my arm's not quite comfortable. My sinuses are clawed. I want a little bit on my other side. I lay on my back and I just roll around for like an hour or two. And then finally it's like, oh, now you can sleep. And I, I, I don't even know at what point I fall asleep. I just know I lay there thrashing about for forever. I, even on tour, as exhausting and long as some of those days were, they were great, but they were really exhausting. It's like I would lay in my bunk. Everyone else would probably be asleep. And I'd be laying there watching something on my phone or my tablet. And then I'd get much less sleep than everybody, or I'd sleep a little bit later than everybody because I was just up there like, okay, well, got to calm my mind, so I'll be watching something until I fall asleep to it. Yeah. Um, I, I have a solution for the uncomfortableness. Uh, if you Wait, finish what you were saying, though. Oh, I, I mean, that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. Yeah, for the uncomfortableness, like a, a lot also backtracking, a lot of my sleep problems, I, I, I wasn't able to fall asleep very well until about six years ago, maybe six, seven years ago. And then one day I was so pissed off at not falling asleep, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna fall asleep! And then I was like, Bruh! and then I fell asleep really fast. Uh, cause I was like, <laughs> cause my imagination was running wild and I'm like, I'm fucking done with this bullshit, shut up! And then I just, yeah. like, I was like, oh, I'm going to sleep now, go away! And then I fell asleep. And then ever since then, I've been better about falling asleep because I make the conscious choice of when I'm going to bed to go to sleep, I am like, okay, I'm falling asleep now. I don't really look at my phone too much, um, but I do. But about the getting uncomfortable thing, I have an easy solution for you. Or, or okay. uh, if you're rolling around in bed and you're uncomfortable, you can't find a good spot, get up and get uncomfortable. Literally get out of bed, go somewhere cold, or open the fridge, stand in front of it, like see the light, and you're like, mm, I hate this. You want to be less comfortable than when you were in your bed, because when you return to your bed, that'll be more comfortable than what you were just in. And for me, it works every time. Like, anytime I, like, I wake up in the middle of the night, my, my bed is hot. I don't even try to deal with it. I get up, and I go someplace that's cold, and I let my bed air out, and I'm like, I want to go back to that bed now, and then instantly I'm better. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, we just so we haven't gotten it yet, but Molly and I have like our Christmas present was we got ourselves a king bed because we've been in a queen. And part of my discomfort is something I can't fully help because Molly likes to sleep not on the edge of the bed. She likes to sleep like in the middle of her pillow. Mm. And then our dogs sleep in bed between her and I. And if she's somewhat like in the middle of her side, then there's two dogs in the middle. It doesn't leave a whole lot of room for me because they like to lay long ways. I'm always fighting with them and stuff until like uh, literally I have to wait until my body is so exhausted it just gives up and passes out. Mm -hmm. And that's how I go to sleep at night. Yeah, that's honestly for me. That's what I get to, too. I reach the point where I'm falling asleep while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but it's like hours for me. Like same if, if Mandy, if we decide to go to bed at like 10 or 11, like we go to bed at 11, that probably means I'm not actually going to be asleep until 2.30 2.30 or 3 o'clock. And I still, no, like, same. I don't feel good. I still wake up at, like, well, hopefully 9 at the latest, but sometime in the morning and start doing stuff. But, um, yeah, I <clears throat> I need, I guess I need to consciously develop this. It's not a thing that I'm very good at, but it's it's a big mix, everything you were saying, of, like, being uncomfortable yeah. in the bed and I'll know, lay down at 3 a.m. out of the bed. Would some help nights, me, but... some nights at 7 a.m. before I, I I check my phone. It's like, oh god, it's 6:40, and I'm still not asleep. 
Last yeah. night, knowing I had to be up early today to get my tooth fixed, last night I tried to go to sleep at like two. Uh, I was like, okay, two to ten, that's about eight hours, that should be fine. Uh, laid down, got my iPad out, four o'clock, five o'clock, five thirty, and then finally at five thirty I was like, I, I'm kind of tired, I'm stressed, I'm just going to do my best to fall asleep. And thankfully it actually worked, I fell asleep pretty quickly, but like generally speaking that doesn't work. But I was still up till 5.30 or 6, somewhere in that range. I had to be up at 10. So I got like four hours of sleep uh, before the show and stuff today. But like, yeah, just knowing I had to go to sleep, that extra pressure of being like, oh, you're going to get less sleep if you don't fall asleep fast. My brain was like, oh, you want to watch this entire playlist tonight? You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's, my, that's my sleep schedule. Every single night, it's watch something on my, it's like do a mobile game or something, then watch something on my tablet until I literally fall asleep watching it. The worst nights for me in terms of like taking a taking a turn for the worse. So most of the time it's on my phone. I'll be scrolling social media or on watching YouTube videos or something relatively passive. There are some times where it'll be it'll get really late. It'll reach a point like usually maybe one or two in the morning, pretty late, where my brain is like, fuck this. And I like go down. I leave the bedroom and put something on Netflix, like a long movie. Mm. And those are, yeah, it, they just reached a point where I'm like, ah, I guess we're not sleeping at all. I mean, I've Let's had... see what happens. I've, I've had that too. I've had situations where, like, my tricks don't work. My, nothing works. And it's just like, it's not time for sleep. Uh, and if your body's saying it's not time for sleep, I guess it's not time for sleep. There, there's probably ways, uh, like I've gotten better at falling asleep, especially the nap stuff has made me really good at it. Uh, and it carried over to recently. Um, but yeah, I, I think most of the time it's just like, it, it is that conscious thing where you're like, I don't really want to fall asleep right now. I, I could be awake, you know, I like, and when that's like hanging around in your head, that makes it almost impossible to go to sleep. Because uh, you're always just like poking yourself like, hey, well, not yet. No, don't go. Um, I do know of one weird solution that I don't ever use, but I know would work. Um, I used to work at uh, UDF, United Dairy Farmers, which is like an ice cream place, gas station, whatever. But my hours were like I would work till 1 a.m. And then some days I had to open at like 4 a.m. And it was just my schedule was always kind of fucked. But sometimes like uh, Tyler and uh, another coworker of ours would come over and they'd want to watch the show Supernatural. Mm. And uh, Tyler's parents had been getting rid of some furniture and they gave us like a couch and this chair. And we got like another chair that's very similar, but it was like a really plush, nice recliner that like leaned back. And I would turn on the show and no matter how awake or tired I was, I would get like 10 minutes into an episode of whatever episode it was. And I loved the show. But I would f I would pass out in that fucking recliner like there's no tomorrow. And our recliner now too would be the same way. I don't ever sleep in it intentionally, but for some there's something about uh, the reclining chair that rocks me to bed like a baby. It's like I'll put on a show, kick back in the recliner, I'll be wide awake, and I'm just done. I sleep really well on planes. Like some people can't sleep on planes. I pass out really fast on planes. Mm -hmm. There's something about like being in a somewhat sitting position. I don't know if it goes back to like being a baby and being like in a car seat or something, but like. Something about being like a comfortable chair or even a fucking plane. Like I said, I can fall asleep easier on a plane than I can in a bed, and it makes no sense to me. There was that a, is weird. Uh, there, yeah. was, there was a job I had uh, building decks when I was in high school, and uh, my boss's truck, huge, like whatever is above an F-350, that's what it was. Because um, it needed to haul a lot of lumber and haul stuff away. Uh, sitting in the passenger seat of that vehicle put me to sleep instantly. Every single morning <laughs> that we'd be going to build decks, I would, I would just be, I could not stay awake. And he'd always pull the joke of screaming and waking me up as if he's about to crash. <laughs> Every day he would do this to me. The super cool guy yeah. joke of pretending to get into a car accident. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Fun. that and plus with uh, the fact that when I, whenever I get a massage or something like that, I have to struggle not to fall asleep. It made me connect the dots of like, okay, what sensations from these experiences are working to help me fall asleep? And so I build off of that to kind of develop the techniques that I use to fall asleep. Um, so yeah, Is I think, it people touching you is that what makes you fall asleep? Well, I, I would have thought that like if someone's just rubbing my back that I wouldn't fall asleep, but no, it's something about like the soothing music, the fact that you have to maintain a 
unmoving position. You are forced to relax. It's it's hmm. those are the elements that I took away from it, like the relaxation, the breathing. My breathing was actually kind of restricted. Uh, I didn't know if laying on my belly was like helping me sleep, but then again, in the chair, in, in the car, truck, like it's still sleeping. So I take these elements from them, and I'm like, okay, what what works? What works? So yeah, no, I got I got sleeping pretty down, uh, but only through a lot of effort and a lot of practice. <laughs> That's yeah, I mean, I've tried some different things, quote. but I've not tried the mindfulness. Bro, and the I got sleeping so weird. fucking down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two two nine month olds talking to each other at daycare. Like, dude, what are you doing lately? <laughs> Man, fucking can't get to sleep. Like, can't figure it out. Bro, I nailed sleeping. <laughs> I sleep for like four hours at a time. I like wake up for milk three times in the night. Killing it. Killing it, like, dude. I got like sleeping down, dude. About trying to be human like oh i am very good at sleeping with my human brain yeah i just lay in my human earth bed and i fall asleep like any human would anyway sleeping sucks and i hate it once i'm asleep though i don't i dude i'm so happy and then like the days where you don't have to get up right away where you just kind of like slowly wake up is so nice you guys ever just have bed days I uh, have that's the counterpoint. I have not, not ha, I have not had a lay in bed day or a slow get up day in over a year. So dude, bed days bed days are what's up. Maybe that's what also helps me fall asleep is because I, I'm I don't get a full eight hours and I always get up from an alarm. So I'm I'm always kind of tired. So that also helps a little bit. I like I'm I'm never like full, full rested. <laughs> You're so, always slightly dying of tiredness. That's my secret. I'm always tired. I'm always tired. <laughs> no, but I get up. When I get up, I feel fully rested. So, like, I'm I'm fine in that department. But. I don't think, no matter when I get up, I don't think I'm fully rested. But I also am pretty sure because I'm a big fat guy, I have sleep apnea, and I need one of those machines that make sure I don't die in my sleep. Mm. I have lots of issues, guys. Give, give some maybe. subs. Come on, five gifted for my issues. Come on, guys. <laughs> Guys, you heard me. I feel like we're holding like, our, we took the hat off Come our on. head. We're walking around right now. Like, guys, listen, I appreciate you coming to the convention to meet us, but we're, we we really have problems. Please, if you just spare a nickel, <laughs> put a nickel in my hat. You're going to put a tip jar a at the end of the hug line. <laughs> can, you, can you just consider donating to your down and out? celebrities here please wasn't it nice meeting your heroes Give if a you're dollar, a maybe real dollars. fan with a hat well i mean you guys laugh but for years that's how things worked with celebrities at like convention when youtubers came that up is it, how things work that is you know what's the work. weirdest fucking thing to me right have you guys been contacted by cameo no i haven't i don't think do so you, do you know what cameo is i do yes is it safe to google this yeah, it, well, well, maybe. I mean, the thing I'm talking about is an app called Cameo. Mm. Unique like, celeb shoutouts. Yeah, so yeah. like absolutely no shade to anyone that has chosen to do this because there are lots of people I know, YouTubers and people that I am I know of or that I know in person who, who have done this, who have made accounts on the app. And they reached out to me and were like, hey, we think you'd be a great fit for Cameo, Bob Mysgerm. You should, de and I like, cool. I'm glad you know my name. You really got me. Um, but like, I get, and I, and clearly these are services that people use. The idea of Cameo is that you can go out there and your favorite celebrity, if they are on the app, will have a, a page where it's like $10 and I'll give you a shout out and I'll say your name and I'll say a little, say a little what up to you or whatever, or $15 and I'll say a custom message of, and like, that's just such a weird interaction for me. Yeah. Like, is this the and app that not... Antonio Brown used, the, the former Steelers wide receiver who's now with, like, Tampa Bay or whatever? Did you guys see the weird uh, shout-out he did? No idea. No. He was and in a not... swimming pool. Well, go ahead, Bob. I'll tell you. It's not, it's not ostensibly that different from, like, someone giving bits or stars and us being like, hey, thanks for the 500 stars or whatever. Like, what up? Happy birthday. It's not like real like it's really not that different but the the fact that this platform exists for the sole purpose of this type of interaction it's just fucking weird to me and like who i don't know who would want that is it am i weird that i don't understand the appeal of that or is that weird well because the I, the whole notion of it seems crazy as shit to me that you would pay actual human money to a, a celebrity of any sort 
just for them to like say hi to you or say happy birthday or something like i mean am i missing know, it's it more I, direct than the bits and subs on like twitch and stuff yeah i i get it yeah i get it i mean i wouldn't yeah. do it myself but i no, understand I the appeal uh because otherwise these people are completely inaccessible um so it, it goes back to the traditional methodology like of of meeting celebrities at a convention, you got to pay to get an autograph. You got to pay to pay to do this. Um, for some people, I guess I would never do it. I I, I don't really like it, but um, for some people, it's it it makes sense because that that can mean something to someone who really looks up to this person to get a personalized message. Uh, streamers do it with you know uh, minimum amounts to get your message on stream. Like it's it's not uncommon. I think it's just a different form. I realized I was muted as I was responding. Oh God! To I was oh, like, I thought it was weird uh, that you were dead silent. I I, you was, were trying to say something. I just, yeah, I don't remember where I started, but um, yeah, I, I I don't find it weird. I think it makes sense because like with with bits and subs, like I said, people can either gloss over them, not read them at all, or they might like miss something, or you know, sometimes they're just like, oh, thanks for the three months, and you like move on. Whereas this, it's like, hey, Tina, happy birthday. I appreciate you supporting me and I just want you to know I hope you have the happiest of the birthdays and it's like you get to see the video the voice that makes sense but in some of the you can tell the celebrities that I want to talk about the Antonio Brown one that like just don't fucking care Antonio Brown was a wide receiver who kind of went batshit fucking crazy and he did a whole bunch of stupid shit like nonstop. and somehow he has another chance he's with Tampa Bay he did one of these videos I think it was for charity it was like someone donated I think it was like five hundred dollars to his thing that was going to charity or something and he was like I, I forget the name he was like hey tom hope you have a happy birthday i also hear it's your 30th anniversary wedding that's the way he phrased it and then he went on this weird little spiel but he's shirtless in a swimming pool talking to this dude like happy birthday and it's like your 30th anniversary and then like in this creepy face creepy voice wedding after that and i don't know what he says after that but it was so goddamn uncomfortable. And uh, I I, I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that was a $500, like, either charity or thing to him for him to say that. And it's like, can you not do a retake? Is it like you record and it's sent? Yeah. Because well, like, no. it was yeah. so horribly worded. It was so uncomfortable. It was like, that is a first take where you didn't even read the draft first. You just have, like, information in front of you. You're like, uh, Tom, birthday, 30th, wedding, happy uh, to you. I guess that's the thing for me. I not I do not look down at all on people who idolize celebrities or pe even people like us. Like I, a lot of people, I think look up to you, Mark, because you've done a bunch of great charity work. And like I understand completely why a person might see what you've done and find you really entertaining or whatever, and 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 really sincerely like look up to you or or a lot of other people in the world who have set good examples and done great things. But this type of relationship in general, which I believe is called parasocial or something like that, sure. where it's like where it's one directional, basically the type of relationship that you and every other like YouTuber and content creator and we have with our fans. Mm -hmm. It's not at all insincere, but it's one directional. And the only examples I've ever seen of cameos are of like actors or, or you know, famous people and it's it's almost it's not as bad, but it's almost like what you're saying, Wade, where they they're they're on their phone like in a Uber going somewhere or something, and they're like, "Hey, Steve, uh, you said that it is your daughter's birthday, and that she's a huge fan. So happy birthday, Steve's daughter, Amanda. <laughs> this is uh, Robert De Niro, and happy birthday. And oh. it's like." The I'm sure that it's it's as sincere as any other interaction, but yeah. at the exact same time, they're just fucking doing that because you paid them fifty bucks. Like they're doing this to fill the hours between their real gigs. There's no, yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm just afraid that people see these sorts of things as like, all right, I'm fr we're practically friends now. <laughs> Robert De Niro sent me a you know a message <laughs> like, no, 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 uh. like. I don't so, I don't but... want to do this in a judgmental way because there's nothing wrong with looking up to people that you admire. Yeah, yeah. But also like that can be really unhealthy. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's such a fine line between that's totally fine and that is not healthy for that person to feel that way about a celebrity who does not know they exist. Even if you get a private message, once they're done recording that and they hit send, they go back to not knowing that you exist. Yeah. Like you're not you're not any closer to them 
and I guess I just it concerns me. Is, uh, is my issue with it? I guess I yeah. guess that's always a concern. That's always going to be around. But something about what you said reminded me of this TikTok. I forget who made it. If if people remember it, please let me know. But uh, it was this kid sitting in a car and he's crying. He's like, "Come on, man, just do one more, man, just do one more." And he pulls up his phone. He's like. Hey Greg, thanks for watching my <laughs> videos. And have a happy birthday and sh keep it popping or something like that. <laughs> just like puts the phone down. And he's like, <laughs> and this caption was just like former Disney star doing cameos for oh rent my money. God. It's just like, oh man, I hope people aren't doing it just to like pay the bills. But I mean, hey, if if you can capitalize on uh, your celebrity in whatever way you can, more power to you, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Put, yeah. Put There's nothing wrong with it. trying to pay the bills and build your brand and do what you think is right it just seems seems concerning to me i, I linked you I'm guys the video bitch. by the way if you guys want to see it i did link you the video in this discord oh, check it out after happy anniversary <laughs> wedding i want to like make a youtube video like a vlog and just use that as a bit Hi. like i accidentally forgot to edit out a clip between shots, I'm just breaking down. Oh, like, was that Danny Gonzalez? Was what? that? A, oh, that might have been Danny. Greg, okay. Greg is what Danny Gonzalez calls his uh, followers. So I, when you said that, I thought it was like just coincidence. But his, uh, he starts every video with, uh, "What's up, Greg?" and What's "Welcome that? to." <laughs> so that may that entirely could be him because that would make sense. Yeah, maybe I have no idea. He's pretty fucking funny. Oh yeah, I get that. He he is the creator of one of my all time favorite vines. Uh, have you ever seen the the? It's a Danny Gonzalez vine from back in the day. It's a serial killer it is in your house and you're hiding in the closet, and the serial killer is like skulking around mm -hmm. and he can't find you, and and he just stops in the middle of a room and goes. Red Robin and the per the person hiding in the closet goes yum fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. He did a stint on Corridor Digital. Actually, he did. He yeah. worked at Corridor oh. for like less than a month or something. I don't know. Before he was like, actually, we're moving to Chicago or wherever <laughs> he lives now. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he, he had like his, he had like his own channel and stuff to pursue. So I get that. And I like, I understand it. I feel like he could have done some awesome stuff with Corridor. His sense of humor with the production value that they would have put into his ideas at Corridor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was excited. Could have been good. Could have uh, been great. Yeah, but it, w it probably would have featured him taking too much of a uh, creative role in things, and you know, with with channels, yeah. you know, it's it's hard to get those. So best just to him go on his own way, I guess. But what do we know? We have no idea. Maybe they hate each other. I don't know. I showed the video on. It's even worse than I remember it being. All right, Happy 30th anniversary gotta... wedding. I hear you're a defense attorney and it's your birthday. <laughs> God. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, Yo. people like cheer bits around. They're like, hey, can you say hi to so-and-so or it's so-and-so's birthday. It's, it's my birthday. birthday. And I, you know, I try to like, hey, happy birthday. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Like, you know, just try to give them like an actual genuine moment there. But like, whatever that is, if that's what the cameos are like, like, I'm sure not everyone's is the same, but that that is so not fair no matter how much they're charging a dollar or five hundred dollars like you got to do better than what yeah what that is if you're doing it that's fine do it well right yeah i'm gonna to play people. the audio on my stream because i want to hear what this is it's i so, just listened to it, it it's here. uh it's um i mean he's anniversary smiling, so. wedding he, he did know that he could do it over again right Oh, <laughs> uh, well, he said he hopes his birthday is booming. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Come on, Wade. You're not giving Come him enough Wade. credit. Come on. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it's just kind of, it's, it's so, it, it's also in a weird way. I, I hope that it doesn't remove too much of the mystique for these celebrities because it, it is kind of draining of the overall celebrity factor that you have, I guess, just because... Oh, Sarah Palin's on here! Great! <laughs> Sarah Palin does cameo? Sarah Palin's on cameo, yeah, she's on cameo. Oh, how, she's many, got... my birthday. how many requests do you think she's bucks. gotten to, to just say straight to the camera, I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> Cause like I don't. That's I'm pretty sure Tina Fey made that bit up. Well, that's yeah. like the main thing I think of when I think of Sarah Palin. And yeah. I would love how much hey, Sarah. Listen, how much? I know you're on down. You're you're downtrodden. You've been sort of booted out of the uh, party and everything. 
how much you want. I would love to have that sound bite for like a notification on my stream. Chat's all like, is Ethan on there? Is Obama on there? <laughs> so Obama, God, if Obama was on here. Can you imagine Obama in his like living room doing cameos straight into the camera? That would be, that would be so. I nice. hope he wears like a nice like robe and he's got like a cigar and like a martini. He's just like God. Can Bernie do fellow... cameos? Sorry, <laughs> just keep going. I'm sorry, you interrupted. No, no, Go. you're good. I, 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 um, I must know. Go. I want to hear it. I, I can't do this. a good Obama. I want to hear. I, I want to hear. Uh, you can do it. You got this. I, I can't. I can't hey, do it. On, I'm, try, I'm trying to even like find a starting point. Hey, come on, Obama. you have great face action. You can do this. My fellow Americans, happy birthday to Tina and Todd on this day of your birth. Yeah, that was pretty bad. It's not good. Yeah, it you know what? Good. No, you know what? With no prep. And being a person who does not do voices of real life people at, as a, as a professional or anything, I will accept that. I could 100% detect the mannerisms that you were trying to go for. I have I to actually. Like I expected that to just be like, my fellow Americans, this is Barack, your homeboy, ex president in the house. I mean, He's Bob, that's well, how like, I expected. It to that's be. how you sits, do impressions. Like, yeah, no, I know. He's dignified, and you know, you, his hands like you, crossed on his lap. I could smell a whiff of Obama in that impression. That honestly, I was impressed. Okay. I expected Thank it you. to be so bad that I would just laugh at you, and Listen. it was not that bad. Wait, I'm not going to lie bad. to you like Bob currently is. That was a very bad impression. <laughs> it was not. It was pretty bad. You and... got to listen. It was not in the tone. His voice, Wade's voice tone is not even close to Obama's and that's I, nothing no. he can I do about that. I didn't even hear a like a uh, you know, no, a, uh, I'm uh, you know, I didn't hear a uh, which was really what I was hoping uh? for. He what? he says uh a lot. Does he? Well, because well, because he speaks with care. He doesn't do with long care. us. He does short us, but when he's doing prepared statements, he doesn't do us. I mean, it, it's not, oh, yeah, well, yeah of course, when Obama he's reading a prepared statement. Oh, okay, all right. But when, when he's speaking off the cuff, which I hope he's giving these personalized messages as, as these cameos should be. You, you know, think he doesn't have a speechwriter prepare right, right. his he'd cameos? he think carefully about it, you know? You think, uh, you you think Obama? Americans, of which, uh, let me be clear, I uh, believe you are. I hope you have a, uh, a happy birthday, uh, Tina and Todd. Is that better? Is that better? You're, you're slipping into a, a little bit of a Woody Allen. I don't even now, know what honestly, Woody Allen sounds like. Honestly, I could hear what you're going for, and that was a market improvement. That was an Thank improvement? You. The oh, okay. tone, the tone improved. The mannerisms got a little weaker. Because you were trying to, you were spreading your focus more, but I could hear what you were going for. It was Closer farther to from, from the why, truth. Why do you think Wade would just be able to pop off an Obama in I can't just pop off to, Obama. I can't. You what? have to give him credit for what he actually did. No, gold star for Obviously, attempting it, a but lot of issues. that was worse. But uh, no one will agree that that wasn't worse. I I Look. I, I, you told I, me to I add know, us, man. I, I added know. us. I said maybe un, uh, or two, you know, like, it didn't have to add uh, between every word. It really well, was. Okay, it, Mr. fucking critic, do an Obama. Do oh, give I, us Obama. I can't do an Obama. He's you just not going to. have a beautiful, sexy voice that's, like Obama that's does. That's how Mark gets out of these situations. He yeah, just I'm doesn't do, do it. it. No, no, shit out an Obama for me right now. I'm Obama. See, that's my bit. You that's, can't do my bit. Yeah. My mm -hmm. bit is to not know how to do anything and pretend, and then oh, everyone Lord. gives you credit for no reason. Oh, yeah, well, Lord. hey, I hadn't watched that show. That was not that I couldn't do it. It was that I didn't even know what I was aiming for. <laughs> I think Mark did watch the show in his fucking prospector version. <laughs> of Holy! Show. It's me, I'm Herschel! I'm Herschel! The crazy I'm prospector! <laughs> You know, I have watched the show since we recorded those videos, and right, I have right. to say, my Lori was better than your Herschel. Thank so. you, man. Thank you. But you tried, damn it. I don't know if you I tried. You think you tried, but you don't. That you one just you devolved. Can, but you can't. <laughs> that devolved into a different human. <laughs> <laughs> me ask me some. <laughs> man, we were funny back then. What happened oh, to us? Those we were the golden days, man. Yeah. All right, uh, I actually am out of time. All right, we stretch it out. We fill the time. Thank God this is over with. No, Are you ending, Bob? I'm going to go play Phasma for a bit. Stumbled to the end of another messy podcast. <laughs> well, um, uh, right, I don't uh, actually know. 
Uh, Phasma was, had a couple updates I want to test out, so I'm going to probably launch that up for a bit. That was surprisingly good. fun, considering we just talked for four hours. I mean, I like, yeah, it was. I like chatting. That was pretty good, actually. Other than like yelling chatting. at chat every three seconds to shut up about, what are you going to game? We don't care about what you think. <laughs> Other than that, it was great. That's I just banned those people. For, yeah. I'll never, never hear from them again. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it just works perfectly. I think my mods do, too. But... <laughs> it's like Fallout 76. It just works. <laughs> See, I get a satisfaction of taking people that are stupid or that are assholes and just ripping them apart on stream and showing their guts to the chat as I do it. But maybe that's just me. I'm gonna, play I'm gonna, I'm gonna order some okay. cameos. So I'm, I'm gonna be busy. <laughs> be busy. Order are you gonna be? Cameos. Can I order a Markiplier cameo? No, soon? no, I'm not gonna be on there. But is that I got still some viable YouTube content? Go on to X website and just order a bunch of shit like Fiverr or cameo or something, and I then mean, just sure, yeah, just re react to it. Yeah, sure. If you want to spend I'm, a few thousand dollars, yeah. I've never gone down that well. I feel like I should try it out. Yeah, go for it. Give it a go. Why not? Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah it was thanks fun. for the podcast, friends. Yeah, Thank you. Bob, if you want to join for Phasma, you're more than welcome. But I'm going to go do that, I guess, for a bit. Uh, uh, I think I'm actually going to play some Valorant. All right, oh, okay. Well. I, there's a new character, so i got to try cool. it out. But have a good afternoon, Enjoy. dudes. Yeah, well, you too. You too. See you guys. Thank you. Uh, take care. Uh, bye bye now. All right, guys. So thank you for the fun stream. It was good to just chat. We were going to play games, but honestly, we were just having a good time talking. Uh, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, Wade's continuing. So go say hi to Wade. Also, Bob is apparently continuing. So go say hi to Bob. He's over at Facebook.com slash Thank you all so much. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.